Uh, hello. It's almost agreement time, people. We're going to do a podcast. We're going to talk about the things. We got some elections coming up. I got my first official scheduled interview for this election cycle, and I'm not sure I'm excited about it or not. Anyway, uh, we're almost agreement. Almost agreement at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. Go to the website almost While you're there, check out the Holler Boo link. Uh, you can sign up to be a vendor or race your soapbox every car down Central. Uh, Holler Boo is October 26th. Uh, we're shutting down the street. We're going to have a good time. You should join us. <clears throat> Find us on your favorite platforms, uh, all your favorite podcast providers. You can get us there. Like, share, friend, follow. Tell your friends about it. Text them to us. Text us to them. That's always the easy way to get people to, to give us a look-see. Um, yeah, and make a note. I'm going to have a, at least one extra episode next week with an interview, maybe two if I can get. I might try to get a whole single race all in one weekend, so we'll see what happens. Um, but, yeah, lots of, lots of generally not so exciting stuff going on as usual. And we're going to talk about that, among other things. Uh, John's in the room with us, as well as Sam, as per usual. So, here we go. Hey, buddy. Hi. Hey. What's happening? Not much. I mean, school's over now. So. Yeah, yeah, school's out. That's what happens. Yeah. It does. Yeah, no There's school for me. I'm going to sixth grade now. <laughs> no school for you? Not yet. Oh, man. I know you're going to middle school now. It's like, so exciting. Yeah. Exciting, but also scary, and I'm a bit sad because I won't see most of my friends. Why don't you see most of your friends? If we're going to different schools, and, well, I don't have many ways to contact them other than you and mom to the their parents which i don't think i have oh, a lot of their friends a lot of your friends are getting phones why don't you have their numbers uh because we were going to make a group chat but one of them didn't have a phone so we just kind of didn't when was the last time you wrote a letter <laughs> <laughs> i have uh never like, yeah never well I, we could spend some time if you I, I didn't know that you wanted it but we could spend some time where i could Help you get some of their phone numbers from their parents, and then you can talk to them directly without having to go through me or mom. Yeah. We can make that happen. Um, so I got a weird question for you. This is going to be, uh, this might make you cringe a little bit, so I pre-apologize. <laughs> okay, what is it? Have you seen boobies in the library at school? No. Are you aware of any books that contain pictures of boobies in their library at school? I don't, like, unless someone doodled inside of it, that, no, okay. no. Well, the state of Tennessee has made it illegal to have a book that contains movies in your library. Hmm. It's really oddly worded. It's a big mess, as per usual. But, uh, yes, images of uh, sexual, sexual images, which it's weird. It's one of those things that comes into this, the good old-fashioned, we need some working definitions here, because with, like, uh, what is it, uh, Venus de Milo, right, the... I think it's Venus or the Aphrodite painting. That's the, that's the chick standing in the seashell. Yeah. You know that one? Yeah. I think that's Venus de Milo. Yeah. So, like, it's a pretty naked lady. She's covering herself with her arm, but it's still obviously a naked woman. But it's also, like, a masterpiece. I could oh. see that being, in, like, I could see that being, like, in a regular encyclopedia. The you know Statue I mean? of David, I think, had a big hole blue not too long ago. Yeah. And it ended up being an American teacher that was getting flack, I guess, for like showing an image of it or something. But I mean, then the the people at the museum that it's at in Italy like found out about it and like paid to have this teacher like flown over to actually see it in person. Nice. Um, like we're sorry, people are so stupid. <laughs> that is, yeah. It. I mean, it, it, but that's the point. It's like it's such an unclear definition, or it's so uh, it's, a, it's such a broad. <laughs> definition or the, depending on the definition there's it's so broad and vague that we don't know what it actually means which has been the it's been the mo for our state le- legislature as of late is to just write everything as vague and broadly as possible and then let every let us all just bicker about what we think it actually means where they don't bother saying so so anyway that's why i asked if you've seen boobies at school mm. have you seen boobies at school at all uh mm, i mean do you count the teachers having them, or... I mean, I know they have them, yeah. Have, have you yeah. seen them? D- that, I define seeing them. 
Naked. No. Okay. That's again. It's just. It's just. Uh, we're. Uh, this, uh, it doesn't matter. I, I don't mean to be. Um. Uh, anyway, whatever. It's that's just one of the things that's going on. That there's. Um. Oh, here's a fun question on the similar on the topic. Moving off of that a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got a little froggy in my throat. Um. <clears throat> do you think? Because one of the things that in the Knox County, in, in the state of Tennessee, and Knox County schools, um. For a for the request to remove a book from access, basically, I don't think this book is appropriate to be in my kid's library, right? You are obliged, uh, the current rule for Knox County Schools is you have to be a parent, teacher, or staff member at the school to make the complaint. And one of the things at play is a number of the people asking for some of these books to get removed aren't parents. They're teachers? Or- no, they're not parents or teachers, they're just people. Mm-hmm. They don't have kids in schools or in school systems. They may have kids that have graduated already. They may have kids um, who are too young to be in schools yet. But the current rule says you have to be, if it's a, if it's a non-employee, so if it's not somebody that works at the school, it has to be a parent. Hmm. Do you think that's appropriate? I don't know. Like, I see two sides. Go the ahead, first, hit me with it. The first side is maybe they have have wrong information and they're just, like, guessing, kind of. But the other side is if they've gone to the school from before and they've seen that book, then, yeah, they should be able to report it. But what would they be doing in the school if they weren't a parent or... I don't know. There could be, like, a school event for a kid that they used to have at that school, but now they don't. Okay. All right, that's side one. What's this, what you said? You had two CC two ways. And then the other side is, again, the misinformation. And, like, if they don't have another kid and they're just speaking about, like, a rumor they heard from another parent or a kid or whatever, then... Well, the part of it is that one of the, one of the laws they put in a couple of years ago is that your library is required to have a list posted online that anybody can access to see what's in the library yeah so which, it w- so it shouldn't be a rumor that i heard this book was here it's a i see that you have this book on your list i don't think you should have it there yeah because we have like ipads to look if the books in inside the library or not they're really scuffed like it's just i don't know people use them normally don't in my opinion get the book they're looking for from it just because it's really confusing. That's unfortunate. But, yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. What do you think about that, Sam? As far as the parent, not parent, being able to make a Google point. Yeah, I, I don't agree that someone not involved in the school should have a dog in that fight. I disagree. Holy. Okay. I mean, if the argument, and, and I've made this argument plenty, is that the reason why we invest in schools as a community is because it is a community good. And we are investing both our money and energy into it. Some people not as much energy as other, but I think we as the investors have a right to be involved if we want to be. I think that is I think that's a fair take. Now people the, the people that are using it, like I think if you're from Kentucky and you're coming down here trying to tell us what books are, no, you go away. But if you're a taxpayer, I think you have a right to, to voice on it. School library, public library, same? Sure. Okay. I mean, this is about school libraries, what we're talking about. I don't know. I'm just kind of broadening it to, you know, if we're going to say if it's taxpayer funded. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I think there is a there's there is interesting conversation to say whether or not there should be. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think of an example of a book that I know of in some way, shape, or form that shouldn't be available in the library. Like, obviously, again, they can't have every book on the planet. That's ridiculous. And so they have to pare it down for one reason or the other. They often do, like, book sales where they're getting rid of books or getting rid of copies of books and going down to one or two copies instead of ten or whatever like that. But, like, there has to be a method for how they bring books in and what books they choose to add as well as subtract in the current status, regardless of complaints or not, right? So... You know, to me, it's like I don't think there's any reason. Like, I don't think there should be any like social, political, moral objection to any book being available in a library if people want it. 
and they can, and the library can find the book. I, I can't think of a book that shouldn't be available. That's part of my problem. Like, I don't care if Mein Kampf's in the library. It's not going to hurt my feelings. You know, like, that's, like, the worst book ever written, quote-unquote, maybe. I don't know. That's, I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to think of something that would be controversial enough that people could make the argument. Now, I could see the argument of saying, well, you're not allowed to have a porn section in the library, on, in a public library. And then we can have the argument about what porn means again, and that goes into the nudity and the vagary and some of the law stuff. <clears throat> um, and I could see that being something that comes through an electoral process as far as, like, the state house and reps put forth uh, some parameters on what the libraries are allowed to carry. And then I guess there'll be some in, in, in interpretation from what that means because the state's really good at writing shit vaguely. But, like, I can't think of a reason why they should. Like, I could, the, I could see an argument for books, certain books not being allowed in schools, and especially in certain levels of schools. That's one of the problems with this is because, you know, one of the things that the Moms for Liberty group and stuff's all been out of shape about is, like, anything that's, especially LGBTQ stuff, but, like, anything that's sexually explicit at all, they want it out, they want it out of the libraries. And it's like, I don't know. There's some, again, depending on your definition, like, there's some, like, it's not a sex scene per se, but there's, like, some sexual contact, for lack of a better word, in, like, the Harry Potter series. The Harry Potter shouldn't be in the high school library because they like there's some kissing going on in that that book and there's more than that you know what i'm saying like yeah, because they're, I they're what, i don't know what's in the books again but but my point is is that they're very vague on it and they say all 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 school libraries it's like well i can see the argument of saying like certain things shouldn't be in uh, an elementary school library but it not being being okay to be in a high school library but they don't break it down that way i could see i, I would think almost like a reverse list of if your parents want to put you on a list at the school, be like, "Hey, this person is not allowed to check out books that are deemed whatever." So I think it would be almost kind of weird to do vice versa. Like, you want to go check it out? It's like, hold on, we got to call a guardian first. I mean, I agree. I agree. So I would think it almost kind of be better in the reverse. Be like, if your parents really have issues with this, they can put you on a list for the library. I mean, and I'm, like, I'm, I'm sorry, right. I can't check this out to you. And, and I've been blatantly uh, talk to your parents. And I've been blatant on it. You know, I think parent, I think parent control is the number one. A, I think parents should have a lot of control over. It. But I don't think but I don't that think gives it's, the parents the control. I don't, like, hey, I, don't, I don't want my kid. I don't think that's. Uh, I don't think that's the way to do that either. It's if you don't want your kid to have that book with your kid after school, and if they have that book in their backpack, take it out of their backpack and then return it to the library. <laughs> don't make it the library's job to keep up with it. Like, if you want complete control over what your kid consumes, full stop, it's your job. It's not the school's job. It's not the internet's job. It's not the daycare's job. It might be the daycare's job. You could have that argument because you're paying them or whatever. But, you know, don't make that the librarian's job that they have to keep an re- active list on who's allowed to borrow what books. That's crazy. So they should just take it out for everyone. No. I'm not, no, I, I'm not saying that at all. I thought you were okay with parents... Being able to, I'm okay with having a more strict and, and maybe more uh, a more a, a narrower view and a more strict conversation about what's allowed to be in, in school libraries by age group more than I am the public library. Is what I was okay. I'm giving the example of a book that has been on this list or whatever. It hasn't been removed yet. No, if it's it, no, if it, if it is for whatever reason, if it is currently in the library, it shouldn't be the librarian's problem to keep up with it. On who's allowed and not allowed to rent it. That's your job as the parent. You 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 want want your kid to read X, then you don't let him read X. You can't make somebody else do that. Protect it. Like that's like, you know, that's like you go into a kid goes into a comic book store. I make mean, yeah, it's kind of like that. It, or kind of the point I was trying to make is that just because you're taking it out of the the library, it's not going to stop that student from being able to access. Sure. But that's why. I, 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 but we should just stop it from being in the school period because that that'll stop the kid from ever seeing it. I don't understand. I I, I feel like we're on the same side of this, but you're you're talking to me no. like we're, we're we're our opinions are different. Our opinions are different on this. Uh, how are our opinions different? I, I I agree that I don't think Fifty Shades of Grey should be in a library that my kid can go to and get something out of school at, at the school library with. My elementary school should should be able to get Fifty Shades of Grey from Rocky Elementary School. Okay. I agree with that as a premise. I think that's an inappropriate book for fifth grade and down. Right. Gross example, but yes, I that. No, I think that's that's exactly the example I was trying to make. Now, I don't think Fifty Shades of Grey necessarily might need to be in a high school library either, so I guess maybe that's why it's not a great example. But I could, 
I don't. I don't know if I'd be. I. I would. I would be as opposed to it being in a high school library as I would an elementary school library. I still think it's inappropriate for a high school library. I certainly don't think it's a problem that it's in the public library. The only restriction I see is making it age appropriate for the kids at the schools that are going there. Okay, that's all I was trying to say. And so, no, you don't take it out unless we all agree that this is a book that's not appropriate for this age group. All right. What I, I, I think that's, I thought we. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, we agree. I feel like it we're, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What do you mean? It doesn't matter. It does matter. I want to understand. I, I think we're, we're just thinking of it differently. It doesn't matter right now. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, John. We were boring you with old people talk. I don't care. I was just drinking my drink and all that show. Drinking your drink. Your hard tea over there. Hard tea. Uh, some of that hoop tea. <laughs> it's just a lemonade tea. Oh, uh, Hunter Palmer in the house. Um, but yeah, that was like a bit. Then the teachers are mad because their pay raises were confusing. That's another one. Did you see that story this week? No. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that again there. That's boring. Okay, man, the floor is yours. You give you got you got ten minutes, uh, in, uh, in, and blow us out. Give us something fun. Um, can you start something that I could talk about? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what's going on. Um, we have an, we have some elections coming up that are pretty exciting to me. Wait, actually, um, I have something uh, really funny that I want to talk about, uh, just for a small bit. All right, I'm glad I helped you start it. Um, so me and my friends, uh, we have a Minecraft server. It consists of four people. So far, it's just been pretty normal. It has a few mods. Mainly just quality of life ones that makes it a game more fun. But now, someone was debating adding laws to the game, like hunt, a hunter's license and all that I stuff. Know, I heard your brother start, might be a dictator, might be becoming a dictator. Yeah, and he said he was going to like uh, be the person who allows you to do it. I don't think it's a good idea, because it's Minecraft. The whole point of the game is to hunt, mine, and craft, and... Yeah. All right. So, uh, all right. I, I'm gonna get deep on this. You ready? Okay. What's the point of life? <laughs> I don't know. I'm too young. <laughs> I'm just saying. No. Anyway, you're so. Uh, what's what? Uh, I like. You know. I think. I think part part of it is there is a natural tendency to organization in groups. I think there's a natural tendency to fall into hierarchies of people. Yeah, like, it'd be fun to start, like, a small little server-wide war that splits teams and stuff, but, like, I don't know. Adding laws just makes the game more unfun. Like, I barely play the game anyway, and the server's, like, the only reason, and (laughs) and that'd be, like... I don't know. That's just stupid. You should should agitate with your peers and, uh, and protest... The unjust laws that your brother's trying to add. Yeah, no. Uh, we're doing a vote, basically. Uh huh. Democracy's fun. Uh, there's only four people, so if a fourth person agrees with me, uh, then it'd be a tie. I said to ask someone. He's, he, uh, my brother. He said that um, uh, that they just agree with me because they're my friend, and I said, well, why not? Ju- just um just do just not say that I was one per- what I voted for to see what he wants. Hey, whether they're your friends or not, a vote's a and vote. It, yeah. That's how a lot of elections are. It's being friendly. It's not necessarily about what the policies are behind the person. Right. I think it's interesting. I I'm 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 really proud of you guys for working this out in uh, democratic fashion, I think that's great. Ow, my ear. Oh man, it's still bothering you. Yeah, the headphones. <gasps> headphones are probably not helpful. Yeah, Squeeze ones, it on your head like that. These ones aren't the helpful ones. Yeah. Like I've had some on, and they're fine. Like they don't make my ears specifically hurt, but these ones. Uh-huh. These ones are bothering your ears. Okay, yeah. well, I mean that might be as good a time as any to, uh, to 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 wrap you out of here, if you want. Unless you got something else you want to cover before we go. No, I don't. All no. right, man. Thanks for hanging out. I hope your I really hope your ears start feeling better soon. Yeah, me too. All right. It hurts. All right, uh, little John, everybody. Little John, I don't know. 
keep working. I'm I really I'm trying to work the rapper nicknames in. We've been running the uh, they've been running the '90s hip hop mix at oh, the gosh. shop this week. Yeah, some jamming, jamming some Tupac and some Biggie. It really sucks that they may or may not have killed each other. <clears throat> I thought they were living on an island down in the Caribbean together or something. I don't know. Either way, they're not making new jams, and they had some Jamie jams, and I'm not getting new ones, and I, I miss it. It's good stuff. Um, so, yeah, anyway, you want to go back or you want to leave that one alone? You done with the library? Co- I, I can't think of too much else to really I, talk about. I mean, on like, on the surface, like, on, on my gut reaction was like, that's a crazy thing to ask for. Be like, you know, non parents being able to voice a complaint about what's in the schools. But, you know, to just to be philosophically consistent, like, that's one of the things that I beg for. I want more people to be more involved in the schools. It's good for it's good for the community that the better the schools are, the more involved the community is, the better the school does, and, and so on and so forth. So having more community involvement is a good thing, whether they're parents or not. And so even though, like, my gut reaction to this is, yeah, yeah you're not a parent. You shouldn't be able to decide that thing. But if they're, I mean, there are state funded schools they are community schools it is important that the community is part of these schools so as much as my gut reaction says otherwise i still think the philosophically correct answer is yes they should have a a say now it's not an election say but they should be able to voice their concerns on things okay i think that's fair or appropriate maybe I mean, nothing. I don't think nothing is preventing them from having their say. They can write a letter to the school, right? But the current Knox County Library and Librarians Association, right? But the current policy but, says that a a non a, a, you have to be a parent or an employee to start it start to start the process. Yeah, I could write a letter and say you shouldn't have this book in there, and I'd have to convince you to then start the process because you're the librarian. Where I, as a parent don't have to write a letter to the librarian to get the librarian to do it for me. I can write a letter to the schools and initiate the process. Instead of having to convince somebody to initiate the process for me. Now, and to be fair, if I can't get, if I can't convince somebody of the 90,000 people involved in Knox County schools, I buy either more than that. Yeah, whatever employees and students alike of the, of the 90,000 some, it's probably 150, 200,000 people in Knox County who who fit the bill to be allowed to initiate the process. If I can't convince one of them to do it, then I probably don't have a very good argument. But, yeah. I guess, I mean, does that start like any kind of complaint as, as it sits now? A parent or whatever. That book automatically gets... Uh, it's it, I think evaluated it, basically. Right, I think it, it 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 initiates a review process, and it's like it's immediate. Like okay, a, a the 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 match is lit to start the fuse. It is this process, and whether yeah. the fuse gets to the bomb to blow it up, or whether we cut the fuse off before it gets to the bomb, that's where we are in the process. But the match is lit because the per, because the way the policy is written is that a employee or parent may initiate the review process a non employee or parent may not initiate the process for some schools i wonder like how much and obviously it would be very time consuming but to just go ahead and do a review of every All fucking books, book in there yeah by, by, like, by hey, the way the law is written you can't currently. dispute it we've already reviewed every single book in here right yeah that, like you can challenge something when something new comes in but everything has been reviewed yeah I, mean, Cause I, I think part of what they got passed last year was like essentially like you know the teachers' libraries that they have, which I think more often than not are like their own books, right? Or that, donations that from or, parents and classrooms right. in the past, like right. students in the past will leave books. Or all the teachers, you know, were having to make a list of all the books that were just in their like little mini library, right? And again, I I, I was unpopular on the opinion, is, and I think that I think that is a fair request to, that 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 library is available that the that the the a list of what's available to my kid is is available to me i think that's a fair request right i think it's an unfair request for me to be like i really don't like the cat in the hat i think it's a little racist i think that i don't think that teacher should be have that book in that classroom 
Because, I mean, again, it's like, I don't know, maybe it's my outlook on, on kids anyway. It's like, okay, if I have a problem with something that my kid has consumed, whether it's, you know, like we get them, he, they, they'll start on some random story. I saw on the internet, I saw a video about, and then you got to go, hey, you know, you got to be a little more critical. You got to think about it. Don't just assume that the guy that says whales fly means that whales actually fly. Right. Do you, does that sound like, uh, does that sound like it might be true? Does it g- give you a little itch in the back that says, maybe I may, maybe I need to learn more about this before I repeat this as an opinion of my own um you know and so that would be the set that as a as proper parenting i think that would be the same thing if i say hey i don't want you to read that book it's in your library that your teacher has or better yet i don't say anything but he comes home and says i read this book today oh yeah what was it oh that's that book I read. okay but since i know it's there i can prepare myself to be able to address what issues i have that that book and why i don't like it why i don't think it's a good book or why the message of that book is inappropriate that would be my due diligence as a parent, not the teacher's due diligence, or not the yeah, right, not the teacher's job to remove it because I don't like it, or the library's job to get rid of it because I don't want to have to, to have a hard conversation with my kids. Because that's most of the books they're going after, or anything that's LGBTQ friendly. So it's like, you know, um, one of the ones it's a high school level book, but it's like a story of a person who came out trans or whatever in high school, and it's kind of one of those like, you know. Um, if this uh, is similar to your life, here's my story version of it. So, you know, which is an important thing for kids to have some, uh, not a role model per se, but at least something to say, okay, that is how I felt before I read this book. Now I understand how other people have gone through the process of becoming open with their, with themselves and their friends and their friends and family. Okay. Or I have no inkling to that whatsoever. Sorry, go ahead. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. Or they have no inkling to that whatsoever, but they say, oh, maybe somebody who is struggling um, to be comfortable with themselves is going through something like this character was, and I can see how that was a tough time. Maybe I'll be a little nicer to that person now because I understand that they might be going through something really complicated like this person was. I don't think that I can't imagine how that's a bad thing. It certainly doesn't going to make you trans. No, but I'd be kind of in your first example, I, I don't know how often, you know, a kid's coming home like, Oh, what'd you read today? But oh, I agree. I hundred percent agree. Oh, that book it, it, to where they would know that like this long list of you know, you know, quote unquote controversial books. Like, but if you, oh, it, but if only I would have known they had that in there, I would be more prepared on how to talk to my child about what to say to them after they've read this book. But if you want to be the parent, instead of just talking to your kid, and like, oh, what'd you learn from the book? Oh, okay. I I, I agree. And actually if, talking about this, sure. Like, I need to know what they have before this ever happens. But if you're a parent that wants the control level that we are discussing, the control. The, if you're a parent that is uh, that it would go so far as to potentially ban a book from a, 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 from being available to anybody, then at least you're implying with your argument is that it's so important as a parent that I don't let my kids see this thing that I'm willing to take it away from everybody, well, then you ought to be that Im- that involved in your kid. You're implying that you're that involved with your kid because, or you're that bad at being involved with your kid. Because- That's what I was about to say. I think it's a little bit more of the, the <laughs> converse, that that it's more of just I want to plug my ear and go, la, 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 don't read that. I don't want to hear anything about it. You never saw it, and it's nothing, nothing's going on. I think it's funny. Like, what's the? Uh, I don't remember what it's called. We've got a thousand of them in this house, this thing down here. The hear no evil, see no evil, speak right. no evil monkeys. I don't right. remember whatever it calls. I don't know why. It's just that it's, it's an old thing. It's been around forever. Right. We've got 50 versions of it in this house. We've got monkeys and owls um, and cats, I think, somewhere in the house. We've got a cat version of it, too. And I've always loved it because it's so ridiculous. Like, it's fun. I had a great conversation with John about it the other day. We were talking about it and like what it means. You know, and it was like this nature versus nurture talk, and we had a good conversation about it. I really enjoyed it. And that's part of why I like it because I think it's an interesting little, like, hangover from this period of i guess some of it's coming back we're having a renaissance of this weird like uh uber you know well if you didn't know if you don't know that i I don't know it's this weird nature nurture argument it's all it is it's like if you didn't know that if you didn't know that you could kill somebody why would you ever kill somebody like that's the the idea if you didn't know that it was a thing that happened you will never do it you won't commit the crime because you don't know the what it is and that's the whole hear no evil, seek no evil, see no evil, speak no evil thing. I, don't, I never knew what it was supposed to mean. Yeah, it's supposed to, like, it's basically, like, <clears throat> um, if you, it's, it, it's a, there's a million different variations on it, but it's basically, like, if you don't know, um, 
Like if you didn't know the N-word, if you never heard the N-word or saw somebody say the N-word, you would never say the N-word. It's like, okay, technically you wouldn't know what it is, but the the intent behind it, the, 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 the why it's a bad word and why you don't say it kind of thing, has nothing really to do with the actual construction of the letter itself. The sentiment of using that word is because you're hating somebody for a really dumb reason because of the color of their skin. And you think they're less than or worse than or whatever because of it. That is a natural human thing. You're going that that feeling is going to go through you at some point, whether it's by race or by other things. But it's something that we do as humans. We can't help ourselves. The the best of us do a good job of controlling that in ourselves and not letting that out. And so that's the the, the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no mo- evil monkey thing to me was always about kind of making fun of the fact that it's a it's it's the it's it's a, it's it's an impossible way to manage um, morality. Because not not exposing you to evil isn't going to stop you from being evil. But that's the idea. That's the joke of the monkeys: is that if you're never exposed to a bad thing, you'll never do a bad thing. And it's like, well, no, you're going to do. You're perfectly capable of doing a bad thing, even if you don't know it's bad. Yeah, I guess I don't see the semblance, but it doesn't matter. What do you mean you don't see the semblance? I don't understand how. A depiction of covering the ears, covering the eyes, covering the mouth is supposed to be a nature versus nurture. And how if you never hear it, then you're never exposed to it. You have no concept of it. No. And then you'll never do it. The speaking it Maybe is the, it's just going over my head. The speak it is the do it part. If you don't know what evil is, if you've never seen evil, if you've never heard evil, you can never speak evil because you've never experienced it. And to me, that's the joke because you could be evil whether you know evil or not. And, and and the nature versus nurture being is that if, if, if nurture was all that mattered in the nature versus nurture argument, if, if it was all nurture, then that would be, that could theoretically be true because if you've never seen or experienced it, then you could never do it. Right. But I think we're beyond that point where I think everybody knows that at least some of it's, there are natural things, whether it's natural from the biology of your combination of your parents and, or, you are a human being, you are an animal, you have animalistic instincts, all those kind of things. That is the nurture part at play. And there's a lot of animalistic human nature kind of things that would probably fall under the evil category if you didn't have some sort of taught moral compass to stop you. No. <laughs> uh, no. oh, I just like don't I, see it. Like I said, we're big fans of it, so I've, been, I've, I've put lots of thought into it. I love them. Um, That's how you perceive it, or this is like oh, I don't how know. the depiction of it is described. I, that, 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 I don't know the uh, like the actual like. Okay, it sounded like the, you were speaking on like this is what the symbolism. I'm, of I'm this pretty is. sure that that is what the symbolism is. Yes. Okay. I, I couldn't quote you the the Wikipedia origin story of of the hear no evil, see no evil monkeys. Right. I think they're always. I think monkeys were the original though, but I could be wrong on that too. Um, yeah uh, so I've uh, I got an interview coming up Wednesday uh, at 8 a.m. because her day starts at 9 and she is not messing with me after 9 a.m. Um, one Monica Irvine for State Senate 6 she is primary against Becky Massey whom then will run against uh, Domenica for the Democrat the only Democrat running which she's on my list of people to call but I got time because that election's not till November. But I do want to get Becky and Monica in here. And so Monica Irvine sent me her flyer. You know, I love my flyers. I love my mailbox oh, full yes, of did. flyers. Um, make Tennessee constitutional again, which I don't get. I've heard that a couple times. I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to mean. What it's supposed to mean is that, or what it says is that you see me, you think Trump. That's it. I think that's a big part of it. Because you can't say make Tennessee great again. That doesn't, there's no flow. Like, I think that, like, I think one of the, one of the I mean, it just doesn't flow. Like, it's a, it's a marketing Too thing. Too many syllables in Tennessee? It just doesn't, I don't know. Make Tennessee Constitution again. Make Tennessee great again. Then it would imply Tennessee was ever great. And I don't know if you agree with that. I don't know if te- Republicans in Tennessee agree that Tennessee was ever great. I'm not. Sure, many would say that there was a nostalgic point that we need sure. to go back to. We're all in a nostalgic. Like everybody's got a nostalgic point to go back to. So, 
But anyway, like to me, that's a it's a it's a nod to Trump. It's a, it's a nod to MAGA for sure. Like that's really what I think that's really what it is. Constitutional is a fun little thing. We'll get into that. Um, I'm sure I'll get into that with her as well. Um, she labels herself a true conservative. Um, that's all her all her flyering and stuff like that. All her posters and stuff like that. The real conservative in the 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 real conservative choice. Um, I'm and, no rhino. Eh. And, uh, yeah, cause, well, and she has a whole list that I'll give her, I'll give her credit. I, I disagree with her on a lot of what's on here, but I'll give her credit for going like on the, like kind of going at some of the issues, quote unquote, um, like buy bills and going actually against, she's going against Massey's record. She's like, Massey voted for this. I wouldn't have voted for that. Here's why. And yeah. so I'll give her credit for that. Yeah. Now agree. I could, I disagree with her on a, a number of her decision, her, her, her reasons for why she would have done the opposite of Becky. I disagree with her for something that she, she, I don't, I don't agree with Becky Massey for doing what she did, but she doesn't disagree with her for a whole different reason that I think is crazy and stupid anyway. So, um, she says, who am I? I'm a daughter of God forever in his debt. I am a relentless defender of the divinely inspired constitution. I don't know the divinity story of the constitution. I'm going to ask her to get me up to speed on that one. That's never mind. Sorry. Go ahead. Is, was the constitution ordained by God? No, we had a godless constitution. Okay. That's what I thought too. That's what I'm saying. She says divinely. It's just kind of this new ploy that a lot of people just want to say all of our, our laws and our constitution are all inspired by God. She is a fierce protector of the unborn. Uh, she is an upholder of the second amendment. She is a bulldog against the woke indoctrination of our children. <laughs> she is a guardian of parental authority. I'm on board with that. I'm, 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 I like parental authority. Yeah. Wait until my kid gets trans and they tell me I can't let my kid go trans. Because then, then she's not a guardian of parental authority. But whatever. Um, an opposer of all medical mandates. A believer in school choice, a strong appointment of open borders. Tell me about what the state of Tennessee can do about open borders of the United States. I want to hear more on that. I'm really curious. Wait, she's a proponent of open borders? She is a strong opponent of open borders. Opponent. Okay. Um, She's a protector of our religious religious freedoms, as long as it's something Christian or Jewish, I'm sure. Um, A preserver of the state sovereignty. I'm good with that. And a refuser of all PAC funding. I, I like that one. So of like 12 points, there's like three that I don't completely disagree with, which is fine. That's the way we're supposed to do this thing. I hope she's not listening to this because I hope she just doesn't cancel the show because I point out things that I disagree with her on here currently. Um, back of her flyer, why is Monica Irvine challenging Becky Massey? Because Becky Massey co-sponsored Senate Bill 0857, drastically expanding abortions in Tennessee by requiring innocent babies to pay the penalty of their father's crime of rape by ending their lives through abortion. You want to break that down a little bit or... Do I want to break it down? Like, do you understand? Like, do you understand what she's saying right there? It's a really well worded. Say it again. She says uh, uh, Becky co-sponsored Senate Bill zero eight five seven. All right, drastically expanding abortions in Tennessee, which is hilarious because drastically expor- expanding from zero to like ten. But whatever, uh, drastically expanding abortions in Tennessee by requiring innocent babies to pay the penalty of their father's crime of rape by ending their lives through abortion. Monica will never vote to kill babies. I, I don't get the the assumption of the, the one the, thing the, the father raping. The one thing that, like the one thing that is very popular in Tennessee, is that an exception to the abortion ban for. Rape and incest. So what she's saying is this exception is penalizing the baby for the crime of the father. Oh, okay. So by allowing a rape victim to have an abortion, the baby is the one paying the penalty for the crime, not the father, the rapist. Okay. That's what it says. I'm just, I I mean, but it was a really, I was very, very well worded way of saying that. It's very convoluted not convoluted but uh it was said in a way that didn't make it sound like what the reality is is she does not accept any exceptions there are no exceptions no abortions full stop at least she's clear about it (laughs) um uh becky massey refused to vote on senate bill 1111 um 
she took a present but not voting in committee. Um, the Senate Bill 111 required written consent from a parent of a minor prior to a doctor administering a vaccine to a minor. Remember that? We've had this conversation a bunch of times. Not specifically, but... I mean, this is this the Senate Bill 1111 um, would have required a parent to have knowledge and consent before a, a vaccine is uh, administered to a minor. Yeah. Which says that a doctor, a kid could get a vaccine without their parents' permission prior to this. Okay. Um, I, I, I agree with her on that one. We've talked about that before. Uh, Refuse to vote on Senate Bill 0126. Took a present but not voting in committee. Was absent on the floor vote version of it. Uh, that was the Becky Massey part. Uh, this bill made it unlawful for doctors to give puberty blocking pharmaceutical drugs to children as young as nine uh, for gender dysphoria. Monica would have voted yes. Monica voted yes, saying that it is illegal for doctors to give puberty blocking pharmaceutical drugs to children, regardless of parent parental consent. So she's already contradicting herself. On the front, she is a guardian of parental authority, except when parents want to assist their kids in trans issues. Because <clears throat> it doesn't, I don't, I, if I recall, it's been a minute. If I remember, uh, Senate Bill 0126 was the one that was like, it doesn't matter if the parents are on, like that was the whole thing with the Vandy Clinic, was that everybody in that Vandy Clinic was going through a long process, like psychologist and all that kind of stuff through the process and the parents had to be a part of it. It couldn't just some kid, a 10 year old couldn't walk in there and ask to transition. Right. The parents had to be a part of the conversation. Right. And so it seems to me that she's not as committed to her parental authority as she says she is. Um, uh, Becky voted yes on Senate bill 2464, giving illegal state benefits, including trade licensing. Um, she also voted yes on Senate Bill 612, giving illegals in-state tuition for college. Monica voted no on both of these bills. I'm curious to know a reason why on that. You know, we have a trade labor deficit, so I don't think – I don't see it as necessary. I, I think it's sad that we don't have non-illegals that are willing to do the jobs, so we have to hire illegals to do the jobs. Why, don't, why do we have such a deficit of employee of, of labor on the topic that we need to do this? I don't know, Becky. I don't know why Becky's decision-making process was either. I need to ask her. I, I'm not. I mean, I could be wrong, but I, I don't think there are many colleges that accept "quote unquote" illegal immigrants. You usually, have to have some kind of status. Either that's a good have, question. You have a student visa, which means you right. are legally here. Right. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe maybe schools are like you have a green card of some okay, sort. Okay, you know how to fill out a form, and you got fifty grand to give me. Come on in. You have a work visa. I don't. I, now, that's legal. Don't, I, you're legal. I mean, you're legally here at that point. Now, if you yeah. say you're a work visa, I could see that being a little bit grayer. I'm curious. I'd like to. I want to. I'm, that's a good question. I need to remember to ask her that. It's like, can you give me the definition when you say illegals? Because if illegals means somebody who isn't, who hasn't gotten citizen granted yet, is that what you're saying? Like, someone who is in the United States who is not a U.S. citizen, is All that right. what you mean by illegal? Because there are lots of people. For lots of reasons that are in the United States that are working and otherwise that aren't citizens of the United States. Right. And a lot of them are going through their process. We have a friend, oh, I think on his 32nd birthday, he moved here when he was 24. I think it was his, right around his 32nd birthday when he got his citizenship. That was a good night. It was a fun time. Yeah. Like I've never, like it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it, it is something that I've, I've taken note and I've, and I need to, I need to think about more often about how much he appreciated that stupid piece of paper that you and I just got. Yeah. Like we just have it. And I have, I could like, you know, like how much he probably knows more <laughs> answers to that question that we probably wouldn't be able to answer. Yeah. That'd be a fun one. We should do an episode where we get a citizenship test and see how badly we do on it. But even that though, it's just like, like, like how, how lucky we were to be here just cause. Yeah. And it's something that I try to remember and I need to do better at remembering more often. Um, Monica continues, uh, Oh, this is my favorite one by far. Um, Becky Massey voted yes on Senate Bill 8001. If I was a good, uh, the, let me sidebar for a second. If I was a good journalist, I would go through and research if any of these passed, which ones did and didn't actually pass, regardless of Becky's vote on it. It doesn't change her point, and that's fair, but I'm just curious. All right. um, anyway, <clears throat> Becky voted yes on Senate Bill 8001. This placed 
Tennessee citizens in a public-private partnership with Ford Motor Company, giving Ford almost $900 million to build their electric car plant in Tennessee. It goes on, but I'm going to pause here for a second. Okay. Now, I agree that that's a there's a conversation to have about that. Is that something that we want to do? Is that something that I think is good spending of our taxpayer dollars? I could see the argument for, you know, economy's sake, Ford's going to build that plant somewhere, whether it's in Kentucky or Mississippi or somewhere else, or if we can get it here and we can spend some tax money and put some tax incentive in place to get it here. But that brings three, four, 500 jobs to a rural ish County in Tennessee somewhere over a decade or two, we might get that money back and it's good for, it's good for Tennessee citizens, even if we don't make our money back, but it's good for the citizens because we have people working and getting insurance and do blah, 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 blah. Like I could see that argument. I could see the argument against on that level. Now for uh, Monica's argument against, um, now taxpayers are a partner with this company that gives millions to Planned Parenthood, organizations that support transgender care for minors and other liberal, or liberal agenda organizations. Monica would have voted no. Not for what I was trying to say that that's poor spending of our money. We could have spent our money on something better. We shouldn't have taken that money. We should have given that back in a tax return. No, because they're friendly to the LGBTQ community. As you say, they go against my Christian values, which, okay. So I better get it. But I'm a strong believer in the, the constitution. Right. That and, says you have the freedom of religion. Right. And I was right. <laughs> well, I mean, Wokeism is kind of its own religion, but not technically. Okay. What happened? <laughs> um, all right. And it goes on with uh, Becky voted yes on Senate Bill 0273. This bill, this bill allows a foreign-owned company to build and govern toll roads in Tennessee with a 50-year non-compete. Monica would have voted no on this bill. Toll roads is an interesting word. I don't. The choice lanes is what only is what I'm assuming this is referencing. I don't know that there are any toll roads. Assuming, so, yeah. um, I did not know that it was a foreign company whom got the contract. I didn't know they'd already had the contract put out. Now, I, it doesn't make it untrue. It could be possible that they are now taking bids on the contract and that there are companies that are foreign owned that are making bids. And so her argument is that it allows a foreign, not that a foreign company is. It could allow. It, it could be one. The company that gets the contract could be. I don't know the truth on that one. To be fair, but at least the verbiage being used here clearly says it allows. If it was a foreign company is building these toll roads, I think you would say it differently. You'd say it a little bit more sternly than it allows for a foreign company, not allows or that it gave a foreign company. All right. No. Um, I don't know if other parts of, of the state are, because I, I think the one they were talking about here is like way off. Oh yeah, so I don't know if there's decade. other parts it's of this. It's going to be decades in the making for any yeah. of them. Yes, yeah, so I don't know if I don't know if there's other parts of the state that are closer to it. I'm assuming Nashville and Memphis, probably. Yeah, I don't. I don't know either. I just don't. I don't. I. I don't like. Yeah, my, my like last last time I remember looking at it and talking about it at all. It was that it was the idea of doing it that nothing was like obviously it was going to be in the ma- the metro areas where they were going to go in first or whatever. Yeah. But it was really just, <clears throat> we're going to put a structure in place so that we can do this in the future. Not that we are doing this tomorrow vote. It was, we are making it the, so this is an option for road expansion. Yeah. That's my understanding of what, what did take place. That's our little, little side tangent. I saw something cool the other yeah. day. Hit me. Oh, and, uh, so like YouTube channel that shows just kind of like new inventions and new stuff that people have come up with. But uh, one of them was actually for uh, like highway construction, where it's basically like this giant kind of like raised ramp and everything that you can to where you could still do road work, you know, during the daytime. That was kind of their main thing is you wouldn't have to do road work, you know, just at night. You can essentially keep the keep that main road open. But where you're working on it, you know, you essentially kind of drive up this small ramp and they they said they had issues with the first i guess of like tractor trailers and i think you're limited to like 35 maybe 40 when you're going like up the ramp and like over but essentially kind of, it's just kind of like this giant like raised section of road to where workers can be underneath working on the road filling patches or whatever so it's like a bur- like a, it's like a rolling bridge like it's kind of, a yeah, temporary yeah. bridge it just goes up and you can work underneath it yeah 
That's cool. I was like, that's, that's so logical. I'm like, I'm surprised. Oh. I never did that before. Instead of being like, my, put all these road cones, everybody's got to go around them. Well, my immediate thought of was uh, bridges and underpasses. More underpasses than bridges. Like, So you're going down a stretch of road. I mean, most underpasses, I think you'd still be good. Well, maybe not for some of the tractor trailers. Yeah, I mean, they're like I think a, a standard, a, a, like I can't remember what the standard is. It's only like twenty six feet, and a tractor trailer is eighteen. Like a standard, like uh, without, like before you have to get the, the special placard for an oversized or whatever. All right. I think it's eighteen feet tall, and so like the standard is, I think the 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 federal standard is twenty two feet. A bridge has to be a b- bridge going over the road has to be twenty two feet in clearance or more. Or that bridge has to have a bunch of special signage saying short bridge or low bridge or whatever right. leading up to it. So, you know, but yeah, either way, I mean, even if that just, even if that cuts down on the big stretches where you don't have bridges and underpasses and makes it easier and safer for those guys to work. And then you just have the shitty old version of construction for those little, those smaller spots. Yeah. It's not the worst. Yeah, I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, that's cool. That's a neat, that's a fun little thing. I was like, Ooh, that thing's really neat. That is something really neat. Um, there is a drone thing I saw. It was a concept video, but that's a it wasn't real yet. Um, Becky voted no on Senate Bill one four nine eight. This bill would allow adults ages t- eighteen to twenty one to inquire uh, to acquire an, en- an enhanced or concealed handgun permit. This vote. This is a vote against the Second Amendment. Monica will always support the Second Amendment. I'm going to ask her. If she wants to get it down to like 14 or 15 while she's at it. I'm good. I mean, you know me. What's the point of the enhanced? Um, enhanced means you can... Uh, fuck, I can't remember what enhances. Like, conceal, like, it's a, we're, we're, a, we're a constitutional carry state, so you can conceal right. carry. That they, they encourage a lot of people. They're like, hey, if you travel outside of the states, like... Right, get it anyway. Right. Like constitutional carry is like one well, from Tennessee and it's constitutional carry there. It's like, yeah, well, buddy, you're it, in, you're in another state right I now. I think some of the enhances you can take it in place. You could carry in places that, um, that otherwise you couldn't. And then I, or, and, or, um, like silencers or I'm sorry, suppressors again, I'm getting all gun people fra- crazy on me. Uh, suppressors, like you have to have a special federal permit to get a suppressor. Right. Which whatever. Um, that's its own thing, but I don't think that falls under the enhanced category either. I don't know what the enhanced carry is in Tennessee. Let's, let's Google that bitch. Guagle. And I'd be surprised if it allows you to carry in places where somebody else with a, a concealed carry couldn't carry. The current handgun permit will be the current handgun carry permit will refer to as an enhanced handgun carry permit, effective one one twenty. Okay, so this, so basically it's already considered right. So basically, if you get a carry permit instead of just carrying because you can, right, is considered a, is considered an enhanced makes it sound more prestigious. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I, but I have an enhanced carry. I know. Now I wish I didn't have it. I feel. I feel. I, I, it, it cringes me out that I have. Well, an just concealed carry. Um, I want to be enhanced. Um, and then Becky Massey refused to support Bill SB one seven two two. This bill would have banned any political and ideological flags, such as gay pride flags, from being flown on K through twelve public schools in Tennessee. Been flown on K through twelve public school. Monica had voted yes for this bill. Um, eh, I don't know. I don't. Is a hat or wood? Is she a? Is she a congressperson already? No, she, she would she have. Would. No, oh, okay. She gotcha. would have voted yes, saying that you are not allowed. Now, gotcha. again, I have some some technical questions on this one. It's like. Uh, the ban would have refused, or the the ban would the bill would have banned any political and ideolo- ideological flags from being flown on K through twelve public schools. That to me reads that 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 it would be on their flagpole proper. Sounds like it, yeah. I I don't disagree with that. I think if you have, I think I I I would think like our Rocky Hill only has one flagpole. The American flag's on it every day. I think if you have a multi pole, you I don't I don't, I don't think you should have anything but. The 
I think if you have three poles, you could have the U.S., this Tennessee, and maybe if you have a school flag that's for your school proper. Yeah. But I don't disagree that they, like, yeah, I could, I wouldn't want to see a blue line American flag hanging on my school either. Can they fly it upside down? If they're in distress. Um, you know, so I, I there's, I mean, I'm, she's not a, like, She's not a hundred. I'm not hundred percent on board with her, but there's some stuff I don't I, I I don't disagree with her on for a poor way of saying it. I think I think that's a I think that's a reasonable thing. I, I it's obviously politically motivated. It's probably some school in Nashville or Memphis, like on, uh, like in February or whatever. Or, you know, Pride's right now. Yeah. Um. I don't know what's the day. What day during the school year would you fly a Pride flag? For any particular reason, like for a specific reason other than just to do it. I mean, somebody Wasn't there a day recently that everybody was big, a big hole blew over because it fell on Easter and they tried to act like this was like some big, like, planned. Yeah, you're right. It did. I, let me, let me. Some big planned, like, takeover that they, they're like, ah, we've been doing this for years. It just happens to fall. Like this, that happens the same day every year. Easter just happened to fall on that same day this year. Like, yeah, uh, it's take not, a breath and look at a calendar every once in a while. Uh, well, I don't remember what it was. I do, I do, I recall what you're talking about, but I don't remember the specifics. Whatever it was, like I, I think it was kind of like you know, uh, like like recognition day, basically, like trans recognition day, or. It, either way, I I, no. I I could get behind the premise of that one is that if if it's the proper pole, if it's the if it's the pole out in front of the school, it should be the American flag. If you have more than one pole, it can, you know, American, the U.S. flag, the state flag, and then either the county or a school flag if you have three poles. All right, I could agree with that, and and I could agree with the premise of saying no others. Do you know the? Uh, this is a trivia question that I never learned or. Never really knew, but you know the one place in America where the American flag flies at the same height as all the other flags. Uh, New York City at the uh, UN complex. And you got it. Yeah, that makes sense. It's otherwise, the American flag is always yeah. supposed to fly above any other. Yep. Uh, there's all sorts of rules. I guess when, like when I was super dorky about it, I remember the missus used to work at the Taco Bell on the Strip when we were freshmen, and they had a U.S. flag hanging vertically in the window. But it was inside, and it's a Taco Bell, so they're all arch windows. They're not square windows. Uh-huh. So from the outside, it was technically flown, cor- flown correctly. But from the inside, where it was actually flown, it was flown backwards. And I always gave them shit about it. And they're like, no, what are you talking about? Because like nine out of ten people, if you ask them, they say, you just rotate it. And it's like, no, you have to flip it and rotate it. Because the, uh, the stars should always be in the top left corner. Uh-huh. If it's if it's against the wall, the stars should always be in the top left corner. All right. And I don't know why I knew that, but it's just one of those things that I poked at all the time for no good reason. Random trivia question. It's all perspective. I was proud of myself. I met with a uh, sportscaster uh, talking about some advertising for the shop, and uh, I put my favorite uh, bar trivia question to him. And I'm curious. I meant to hit him. He, I figured he'd text me when he figured it out because I know we've talked about this before. It's been a while. But in Major League Baseball, there are two teams whose team nickname does not end in S. So, I'm not giving you an example of the correct answer, but to be clear on what a team nickname is, it'd be the Atlanta Braves. Braves right. ends in S. Right. So there's two teams in Major League Baseball that don't end in S, and it's really funny if, once you figure it out. <clears throat> and so I put that to him, and he was like, "I'm gonna freak out when I figure this out." I was like, "Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna laugh at it." Um, and I was like, "There's like 15 in college football, and that's the fun one because a lot of them you don't think about because." They're Division One A schools, but they're not schools. You know, uh, right. UMass is always one of my like you like. There's one in the SEC, and that usually takes people a while. Um, but uh, UMass is UMass is the Minutemen, but it's like UMass and co- UMass isn't really a college football team. Nobody pays that much attention to them, so that one gets a little bit hard. Um, there are like four hockey teams. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've gone through it because there's been some new teams added. So I'm not sure I'm 100 percent correct anymore. There's like two basketball teams. Um, and zero NFL teams, but it's a fun one. Yeah, I saw the new NHL team. I think they're down to six. I'm kind of hoping there's a caveat that they can override like 
the public voting that these were just suggestions. Oh, on the team names? Yeah. Was it Hockey McHockey Face? Because that's always no. one in the public voting. Like, Yeti was one of them. Where is it? Uh, they're moving to Salt Lake City, but they're going to be Utah. Who is it? Is it the current team moving? or is? Oh, it- yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, Arizona's moving to Utah. Okay. I forget. Like It's the guy that owns the Jazz and something else. I guess he bought the franchise, the Coyotes, right. basically. Right. The Coyotes is not one of those, but there are uh, there's. Um, uh, fuck. I can't try to remember how many hockey teams. Yeti. Yeti's not terrible. It's kind of weird. Salt Lake City. I don't know Utah how much Yeti. I think I think they're going to be Utah. Whatever. So it's not the Salt Lake City. Right. Utah Jazz. There's one of your basketball teams, by the way. Right. Um. Hmm. There are a few other ones. I was like, I don't, I don't like any of these. <laughs> I don't know, like. I don't understand the Golden Knights. Like, what does that have to do with anything? Like, 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 sure. like I was really like, I was really excited to find out the like, um, like Kraken's kind of cool. Yeah, well, it's it, like a myth, you know, mythological, right? But it's also like Seattle's kind of known for their like, what was it Fisherman's Wharf or whatever? Like every time you see, yeah. like every time, uh, like. I don't know, Wheel of Fortune or something does a show in Seattle. They always have Pat and Vanna out there at the Fisherman's Wharf, and they're throwing the fish across the thing. Yeah, he just did his last episode. I know. I watched it. I cried a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, a huge, I'm not a huge Wheel fan, but I did watch it. Like, it was funny because, like, they, they, they started it kind of like a normal show, but they could go up there. He's like, hey, so um, congratulations. You're the last three contestants uh, that I will host on the show. It's great to meet you guys. Uh, we're going to take out a whole round so that I can give my farewell speech. So I'm going to spin the wheel and we're going to give you all a thousand dollars more than whatever I land on just because you're going to lose a round. So here we go. He said, you know what? You all get five grand moving on. It was fun. Um, but yeah, Kraken's and Kraken's one of the newer ones in hockey. That's why I don't know the numbers in hockey anymore. Colorado avalanche. Uh, that's another one, but, uh, yeah, Yeti sounds kind of Yeti's a little rough, but I get I get the crack in for Seattle, but I don't get the Golden Knights. Like I was super excited to find. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know the, uh, the the origin of it. I was super excited to find out that the Predators, the the whole saber tooth cat thing, right, wasn't just random, right. You know, there was a a dig that found that we did have. They were indigenous to the lands many many moons ago, and that was really cool. That that's kind of incorporated into that team name kind of thing. What do you got? I was looking for the story and I just came across another news story. NHL WWE partner to bring fans Stanley Cup championship belt. I don't know what it is. Probably just a souvenir belt, maybe. I don't know. Something fun. Let's see here. Damn it. There's no way to. Ooh, Vols baseball played today in the Super Regionals. While we're talking sports, How can I search? I don't know why you can't search. Oh yeah, eleven to six. Is. Way to go, UT! But. Uh, yeah, what else was going on? That I oh, the teacher pay thing was kind of funny. Did you see any of that story? No, you had mentioned it. Okay, so basically, um, it was a couple months ago, the school board had announced um, a new pay schedule, basically. Like, you know, <clears throat> everybody, like... I'm sorry, so, I found it. Okay, go ahead. Do it. And we'll uh, we got uh, Blizzard, uh, Utah Hockey Club, or Utah HC, Utah Mammoth, Utah Outlaws, Utah Venom, and Utah Yeti. He said, "Oh, like almost all of those." I was like, "I don't like, uh, I don't uh, like the, I don't like the soccer style ones. That's not fun." Yeah, oh, it was kind of weird. Mammoth's not bad. It doesn't really flow because that they probably already have like a, a Utah FC. No, no, they're Salt Lake City. I'm not sure what they are actually. I know Salt Lake City has a a team, right? Yeah, the Outlaws, the Venom. I don't know. Yeah, sorry. They have poisonous snakes around, though. Venom works. 
Mm, yeah, I'm sure there's probably some venomous states there. <laughs> and they get to use the uh, team name without an S, which gets to add them to the category for me. Touche. <laughs> which is fun Something for me. they should definitely highly consider. I think it should be part of the process. Um, so, yeah, anyway, the teachers put the task or the, the – the new pay schedule went so like school board hired a, a somebody to do a, a study on basically like what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. What should what is the market rate around for the job? Right. You know, so if you're a teacher that's been a teacher for this, there I can't remember they they don't call it like experience years, but they have some sort of number system, and it's like, well, if you've done the job. And then you put this many years in, it's that job plus three, whatever. So they basically rebuilt this whole schedule thing around what this survey said. Okay, well, neighboring counties, cities of similar size around the country, you know, adjusted for cost of living and this, that, and the other did this whole big thing. And they basically just said, okay, we think that's perfect. We're pushing it over into ours. And so uh, it was apparently real confusing for a lot of people. Because they didn't know what to expect, and so this oh, was when they're going to implement it, or no, what it's actually going to do to your paycheck if you're a teacher yeah. or a custodian or whatever. And so, like um, last Friday, I think was the first payday, or no, it was when the actual correct, like when the when the update was basically, it's like you, Sam, are now going to be getting paid this. And so, like every employee got a letter of sorts that basically said, "Here is your new pay, here here is your new pay setup," and benefits package and all the different stuff that they do every year um, with their cost of living increases and all the different, you know, the 10 year you, you are, you have now worked your fifth year, which puts you into this new thing, that whole thing. So they do this every year anyway, but you know, a lot of, there's apparently a good number of people who are expecting a larger raise than they got um, up into including one story of a, uh, a, some sort of administrator whose total salary change is $30 a year greater. So their entire raise was uh, 75 cents a week or something like that. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> presumably they were expecting a little bit more than that. But, and so there's a bunch of confusion and a bunch of social media storm to enough that the actual school, Knox County schools put out a statement that said, if you have any questions, you can call us about it, but we can explain to you why you got the pay you got, why it is the way it is. But this was all in the stuff that we did last month. Hmm. But there was a little bit of a hullabaloo, if you will. Hullabaloo. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah. Uh, school scholarly thing. Um, the city is trying to sell it? half of Chilhawi Park. That's another one. I didn't see that. Not, it's not Chilhawi Park. We were talking about parking. I saw a story a few days ago that was saying with the stadium that was being built. And they're like halfway through that there's debate whether or not there's enough parking downtown i guess for when there are games <laughs> yeah always i think that's that is as clickbaity a headline as you get for people to pay attention to local stuff i think so i think so i think that's one of those that's because i mean it was it was it was actually it was a shocking part of putting on holler of all the stuff that we were doing of all the things going on like the week leading to it uh, the email that went through the website came to me and it's just the general, like I have questions, email or whatever. Right. Like if you have a question or concern, just shoot us an email. And I don't remember how many total, but I got a good sum of where do we park? And it's like, I don't know in the parking lots. Like, I don't, there's plenty of parking down here. I don't know. Well, what I mean, sometimes there are events like that, you know, they, they've got certain areas that are like that, you know, the group has set aside sure. for as no, I get partner. it. And it's something that next time around we're going to, I'm um, like in our comprehensive map that we're putting together and stuff like that. I'm going to have a highlighted zones and stuff like that. We're going to put that on the website. All right. It is something I'm going to address in the future, but it's just not something that I thought about anybody thinking about coming down to participate. Like, I don't know what it is about parking that is so important to everybody. I mean, I'd say there's a good chunk of the city, myself included, that if I went down there, like, I wouldn't know that many places to park down there. Yeah. I mean, there's two garages that I go to, and that's it. Yeah. And if they're full, I just kind of drive around until I find some, you know, white pea in a blue square and go, oh, okay, let's see what's going on over there. But there's a, I mean, I don't know. I got, not to reopen what we talked about last week, but I think, I think it was last week, right? We were talking about the, 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 another the city paid for a study of parking lots and the report suggests that we 
get rid of free nights and weekends and charge more per space per hour. It might have been a week before. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think, I think, yes, I think get rid of all of it. People are going to pay to park down there, charge more, use that, but use that money specifically for getting, putting into the cat bus system or some way of getting people that don't want to park down there and don't want to pay for parking down there yeah. and out. I think that's the, that's the more reasonable solution than, you know, people like, I mean, people literally say, well, if I got to pay for parking, I'm not going down there. That sucks. Yeah. I mean, that just sucks. I don't know what to tell you. Like, that's just, that's crappy. Um, but yeah, so not there. It's not chill. How we like the, you know, the tunnel that goes under Magnolia. I think so. Yeah. So, so like there's the, like there's the fair part. I don't know. Like it's such a weird spot. So like, cause I always think of it as going to the zoo, right? So you get off at the chair, not the cherry street exit, the one after that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And it does like that U, that big U turn, and then you go straight through the light, and so you're going back the other way. The interstate's on your right. There's some weird little church and some Rutledge. swamp. Yeah, and then, um, you know, and so there's that weird little dirt track thing, and then there's the intersection, and then you go straight through the intersection, and then you go around into the uh, Sioux parking lot. Yeah. And then to your left, there's that huge parking, and there's that big parking lot, which is overflow for the zoo. But then you have that, like, livestock building. Mm-hmm. And then there's another building a little bit down and then there's the lake and then there's the muse and then there's the tunnel that goes under and then there's that parking lot that's on that side. Mm, not sure if I've ever noticed that tunnel. Yeah. And so that the south side of Magnolia is what they're trying to sell off. So that whole chunk of property. Yeah. They're trying yeah. to sell it off as just like commercial space or yeah, they're one like a mixed use, whatever. They want it to be a mixed use residential commercial zone. What about when the chill how we f- right fair what ludicrous is coming this year? We gotta have parking for ludicrous. I know. And it's gonna be ludicrous if we can't find a place to park. And he's gonna ha- he's gonna be selling his state farm insurance, it'll be great. That's right. Or farm bureau, whatever he sells. Uh but like, because apparently like they've done stuff there. I wouldn't mean the boys uh, went to there was a uh lantern festival. It's a really cool Asian theme. They had, like, the people in, like, the big giant dragon. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That was a cool one. Oh, uh, yeah. You can grab me the last one of mine, too, if you don't care. Thank you, my good friend. Um, but so, like, periodically they use it in and of itself for events, but mostly it's where, like, crew and uh, the, you know, the trucks that are bringing the rides in, like, they park, they, you know, they put the rides in. And then they park the actual truck part over right. there and stuff like that. So it's usually just kind of over, overflow parking. So I guess the city just assumes in future versions and events down there, they can just find somewhere else to park those. I'm, I mean, whatever. I'm, I don't. I'm good with it. Get it out of. Get it off. Get it. Get it back on the tax rolls. I don't know how big of a space they're really talking about it's, here. It's pretty. It's 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 not small. Let me see if I can find a map for you. That's yeah, not necessary. Well, I'm already in the process now. So cool. Oh, ooh, excuse me. That was rude, dude. Do, 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 do. Pass that right here. Enhance. Enhance. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Straw planes? Nope, too far. Yeah, we don't cross the river yet. Inside 640. Rutledge back. There we go. Zoom, 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 zoom. This, park not. this spot over here, this whole block. Hmm. Uh, with a, on the corner of... Who owns it now? Is it just the city Beeman. that owns it? Yeah. It's just it's it's part of Chilhowee Park. Okay. Like, technically, it's... it's Like, if you go, like, I think right, like right here where the entrance is, it has that Chilhowee Park archway entrance thing. Yeah. <clears throat> and so they want to I mean I like it I'm good with it get it off the get it out of and onto the tax rolls make some money off of it do some you know do something cool down there it'd be good for the neighborhood get some more commerce investment east side needs what it needs that'd work if they don't do any kind of like TIF project that's no, true they probably will but even that, I, I that's a good question. I wonder how that works on a TIFF. 
Because I still think they would have to pay the property tax of what it would have cost in its prior status. They wouldn't have to pay zero because it was city owned, but therefore it wasn't paying property tax. I would think they would have to still pay what that piece of property would have paid as it stood without the improvement that they're doing. That's a good question, though. I like that. I'm going to have to ask that. I'm going to follow up on that. Yeah, I, was, I was being cynical by saying it, that I, somehow we've got to con- conjole developers so much. I go, well, I'll, I'd, I'd buy it, but I, 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 I need you to, to make it a, a really hell of a deal for me to really want to pay here, here's the thing. There. Here's the thing to me is if you're going to have demands on it, I think that's fair. If you're just, if it's literally just, I want to build a things, can you give me some free money? Then no. Right. You know, like if it's like, you know, I want to do, <clears throat> you know, I, I as the city want this kind of thing going on here. Cause like the city says they want this built. And so they're going to, you know, they're going to, they're the, somebody that works for the city is going to seek out developers who develop that kind of thing. And it's like, well, if you want me to build that, then I need this in return. I think that's a fair negotiation point because that developer could just build a X that isn't what the city wants and it would cost them less and they could make similar funds or whatever, depending on what, like, you know, like you could build a strip mall for way less and not make as much, but make a good amount of money off of it. Because it costs you less, way less. Put demands on that, like we're only going to sell it to you if you build A, B, C, D, E, or F. Well, I'm only going to buy it from you and build it the way you want me to build it if you give me. I mean, I think yeah, you could do it both. But no, I, that's you, what I'm wondering. If the city, if if the city A is, or if the city can. Ooh, I don't, yeah, I would think. I mean. I think they could put. I mean, I think they could put a stipulation that says, you know, especially if they're selling it under market, and that's another question too. You know, how much is this piece of land actually worth versus what we're selling it for? Yeah. You know, the true value of this piece of land is X. We're selling it for Y. We will sell it to you for Y if you do, if you guarantee A, B, or C. I mean, not knowing anything about it, it kind of sounds like the city is already kind of tipping their hand and being like, we don't have much use for this. That's fine, but it doesn't cost them anything to keep it. somebody else that kind of wants this. It doesn't cost them anything to keep it. Or not much. No, but it it greatly affects your, I guess, negotiation. (laughs) Especially if you're going to be like, well, if you buy it, we kind of want you to do this. And they're like, well... Let's do it. I, 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 like lower I, it even more. I see that the other way. I see the other way is that you're not a motivated seller. You have a want. You want to sell. You want to sell it, but not a need to sell. Right. You're not a motivated seller, so you could be like, "Yeah, I'll sell it to you if you do this." Well, I don't want to do that, but I'll buy it if you really want to get rid of it. It's like, well, we don't want to get rid of it that bad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's kind of my. That's. That, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how those conversations actually go. All right. Because I don't understand property, like commercial property owners anyway. Like there's so many commercial properties that sit empty for so long yeah. and stuff like that. It's just like, you're just, how, how do you just pay the taxes on that and bring no revenue? And like you know, with these people that do, I can't remember what they call it, but it's basically like they're just banking it. They're just like, I bought this piece of property in 20, 20, 2020 for $5 million and I'll pay my property tax on it. But in 2050, I'll sell it for $15 million and. It's worth it for me to just sit on it until the value goes up and then resell it. It's like you could just, you know, do something with it while you're waiting and maybe make a few bucks for the 30 years you're going to hold on to it. Same thing. I mean, I would guess that, that part of that time is it's kind of like with any kind of like new construction, especially if you buy an older building. It's like, well, if you do anything to it. You're going to have to automatically bring See, everything think, up to code. I think if you're buying it with intent to do something, you have all those questions answered before you buy it. True. And maybe, that's what I'm saying. Maybe that's why they sit on it. They're just like, I'm going to wait for the value to go up and I'm just going to resell it. Right. Which is that, that, that in and of itself is crazy to me. But that's like the Baxters who own the Holston properties or the Holstons who own the Baxter properties, whatever it is. The Holston family who owns the, the one down there in the riverfront. That one. The the one the, yeah that one property down on the riverfront on the south side of the river I don't, I don't know what you're talking about okay it's right, right so where Gay Street goes across the river All right. like the whole left bank is the old Holston Gas 
it's still technically they still do use a little stuff in there. But it's the whole thing. So that JFG sign that's up? Yeah, underneath Big it. billboard underneath yeah. it? Okay. It's the actual riverfront because it's one of the, like, <clears throat> it's one of the few spots. It's, it's, the, it's the largest spot that is at level with the river. Like everything else in that section goes up the cliff before it gets whatever. Like yeah. it's a huge, it's a huge piece of land that's down there at the river level instead of way up high. Um, and it used to be back when they brought the gas in and stuff on barges that it used to be a functional spot. That's why they used that. That's why they had it in the first place. But they now bought they they built that new building up on two seventy five just right up by us. Um, and uh, like this, it's been like this big swirling rumor in the community is like, are they going to sell that? Who's going to buy that? What are they going to build there when they get the Holston out of there? And like all conversations, at least that I've heard the rumor on, at least is the Baxter the Baxter family who owns Holston properties. Is just like, yeah, whatever. We're going to use it minimally. I think they still do like propane tank refills there, but that's it. Yeah. Like if you were to go down there with your grill propane tank or the handful of people that companies that have like forklifts that run off propane, they go down there and get propane refills. But like yeah. everything else runs out of their 275 facility because it works and it's more accessible and blah, 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 blah. But like, you know, it'd be a, it's a really cool spot. You could do some really cool, like it'd be one of those like feature spots if we, if we could get it and get somebody to build something cool down there. But man, it's just going to be this industrial ass at Holston building for until the, cause that's what they, that's what they do. That's, that's one of, that's their property management thing. Cause they own a bunch of property around the holler. All right. Um, and well, there was talk for a while, you know, with, uh, with Billy Weigel, like owning a whole bunch of property that he would sit on. Waiting yeah. for an area to develop enough, and then would yeah plop a new one. See, I mean, like I can get that if you're early enough in the game and you're buying like Hardin Valley real estate, right? You know, like you're buying. Like, so he's been in the area long enough and is, is able to see. I'm right. sure he's got people that are much more in the know also, than him, but that know like where the city's logically to expand. Right, and it's back then. You know, you could get like a half acre or whatever it is out in what is Hardin Valley now for fifteen grand. Right. Where you couldn't get a square foot in Hardin Valley now for fifteen grand, All right? Um, you know, and so you know you're in on it early enough, and you're just buying, you know, and, and especially if it's like you know, like I don't know what's the what is it out there? What's the what is the road? Hardin Valley Road. Um, you know, but it was what was it Middlebrook? It turns into Middlebrook, yeah, yeah. So, like, Middlebrook was obviously a thoroughfare. It was always going to be a thoroughfare. It was always – it's one of the longest, continuous, more or less straight roads in Knox County. I, you could look at it – you could probably look at a map years ago and be like, you know, I'm going to buy this spot here, this spot here, this spot here on this road that are going to be commercial spots that I could put a gas station in eventually when I want to. Right. But I bought, you know, 15 of these along one major one, – one future major thoroughfare for a hundred grand. And I can sit on those for a long time, especially when I'm selling all that sweet, sweet milk with the bugs in it. That I mean, I, I kind of miss it. Like I, I, I don't miss it. I've never was going to be. I, I, I never saw myself as using that part of the service, but I kind of miss the idea of it. Oh, like swapping your jug and everything. Yeah, yeah. Like is it good? Like I like the idea. I can't think of it. There's a business downtown in South Knoxville that. I- Kind of in that same thought. I think you can go buy like like shampoo, conditioner, oh, like yeah. soaps a new and one stuff. In City too. Like you, okay. it's like refill. I thought I knew the name. Yeah, like refill or something like yeah. that. It's like Basically, you bring your own container out. and like, hey, we've got all this like, you know, general purpose or you know, all sorts of different liquids that you can, if you got your container. I thought they, I thought they did dry stuff cheap. too. They did like. Yeah, it's possible. I'm not yeah, sure. I don't know. It's a bath salts at a. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe you could do some dry stuff in it too. Yeah, which is really kind of funny. Like I, I don't disagree. I like with, the idea. Of it. I like the idea of it too. But it, like, if you remember, so they have like laundry detergent. You can a go lot buy. of grocery stores had those in like, like you get granola that way. Like Kroger used to have like a granola thing where it had a bunch of different granolas and yeah, I like being meals a, and stuff like that. we have been amazed. I think the first time I went to Vermont, I went to a grocery store. And they had like the machines where they had like some almonds and like some yeah, peanuts yeah. and other stuff where like it was like basically like like you it would grind up your own uh peanut butter. Peanut almond butter, butter, yeah. 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 
Kroger's used Kroger's. Yeah, I've never used it, but I mean, a lot of the grocery stores still have where you can put beans in there, and it'll yep. ground the beans right there for you. Yeah, coffee. Yeah, yeah. But like the 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 nuts one, and like the cereals and the granola ones, those all came out and haven't come back since the pandemic. And so I was like, you can buy peanut butter in bulk. Like what? What is? Where am I? Freshly, freshly ground. Like uh, I don't know. I I like peanut butter. Okay, I'm not a huge peanut butter fan. Yeah. I don't hate peanut butter, but I've never really thought. I want peanut butter that was buttered today. Yeah. I don't want this peanut butter that was buttered a month ago. I don't assume flavors definitely going to be a little different because I'm assuming there's definitely some preservatives that are in. Yeah, there should probably certainly to make it more store shelf. There is store shelf shelf stable. Shelf stable, yeah. There's definitely less. It's going to taste more like peanuts because that's all it is. And yeah, definitely a lot more oil. I've definitely heard like with natural peanut, like yeah, it's really oil. peanut butter, like. You're gonna to have to stir that shit up for yeah, you. Want for, to for sure, <laughs> spread it out. We got in the argument with the kids because the kids saw on the internet that uh, Taco Bell puts sand in their meat, which cool. is it's technically it's theoretically true. Like what is what is sand? Sand. Like what is sand chemically? Uh, dead uh, organisms, basically. Right. Well, some is, some sand. Part, most it is in sand, but sand proper is silica. It's just ground silica. Yeah, that has been ground to a fine powder of sand. <clears throat> and so silica is a binding agent that's used in a lot of foods. And so the reason the Taco Bell meat isn't like like you like you if you do ground beef and you chop it up and you you know just brown some ground beef to make your own tacos at home. Yeah, like it's loose and they float around and there's you drain the oil off. But there's not a lot, like it's not like the, if you want like a chili, so it's kind of got like a sauce to it, but it's like a thick sauce, that's what the silica is for. Hmm. And so it keeps it in, it keeps it like suspended. It, it sounds gross when you say it that way, right. but it keeps it as a, it's a, it, it, yeah, it does nothing. It's your body separating as much <clears throat> the theory or like uh, uh, at least argumentatively, your body just passes it. It doesn't do anything. It just goes through you, but it makes it into a like gravy ish kind of meat sauce instead of just like meat and sauce. I want to say with like bubble gum, like the powder that keeps the, uh, the gum from sticking to like the wrapper foil itself. Yeah. is actually like super fine, like marble dust or something like that. Ooh. I want to say it's some kind of like rock dust. It's interesting. It is weird that the only, the, the only like, um, rock, we seek out to eat. There's only one that's like, and and nece- and, and ne- a necessity nonetheless. Iron, salt, salt. Like as a ro- in rock form. Yeah, that's a weird. It's, I don't. Know. It's just one of those things that I know for no reason, but I know. I mean, the majority of what's of what is consumed is. Artificially made, and it's not natural salt. True. We like our Himalayan sea salt. I like yeah. that pink shit. I don't, Fancy. I don't I just like salt. I think it doesn't matter. I like thicker salt. I don't like the fine. Like, I don't like standard grain salt. Like, I like the... We have a, a salt grinder, so I like big salt that I grind when I use it. I'm saying, I think it might have been a teacher in high school that kind of pointed out that, you know, without kind of standardized you know iodized uh salt that that's where we get most of our like you know daily intake of actual like iodine which is necessary yeah it is a weird one it is it is like because yeah we don't like i don't know we we have a case study in halfway there with my kids because we don't we we do use iodized salt obviously and if you go anywhere like you go to Taco Bell or not Taco Bell, but Chick Fil A or McDonald's or whatever. That's iodized salt on your fries anyway. But we don't use a lot of iodized salt in the house regularly, hmm. so maybe that's why he has ear problems. What is iodine good for? What does it do? Uh, don't remember. <laughs> we just know we need it. Yeah. Oh, uh, what else we got? So I'm pretty sure the iodine is ne- necessary for. Nutritional value. I know that's why they. Well, that's why they put it. I, I know that why be, that became a thing. I do recall that story. I don't yeah. remember the specifics of it. Same thing with the fluoride in our 
drinking water. Yeah. That was a thing. Some, to some, help some still debate that, but yeah. Yeah. I get, I mean, I think some people took more issue is that it was added to their water, I guess, without their knowledge. I mean, I think at, at some times. point it's like, well, I don't know. Like at some point it's like, well, like general dental care is normal now where maybe I think when they put that in, like normal dentist physics was a little bit more rare. Right. Dental hygiene wasn't as well known. Like bad teeth and stuff was bad teeth was normal. And we didn't take care of our teeth. And so this was a thing that we were doing to try to help people. But it's like, okay, well, the actual like day-to-day function of people taking care of their teeth has caught up. So do we still need to keep doing this? <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think. I did not get any of my national coverage this week. I didn't listen to a single episode of Breaking Points. So I don't know what's happened on the grand scale this week. I don't think I've heard anything too crazy. I, I did see the uh, Prime Minister of Denmark got assaulted. There's not too much, I guess, out on it yet. I think she made a, or she made a statement that said she was shocked, but I guess she was like out in like a town square, basically. Like somebody threw a shoe at her? What are we talking about? Assault? Uh, there's, uh, like I said, there, there was there was scant talk of it whatsoever. I mean, that one reporter actually, like, threw what, a shoe at uh, what? Bush Jr. Yeah, Bush Jr. You know, that's an assault, I think, technically. Attempted assault. Yeah, Dude, I, I think he was he's pretty quick and ducked, if I remember the video correctly. Like, I got, I'm quick on, I'm fast on my feet. Yeah. I'm quick on my, quick, I, light, I got light feet. I can, I can move, I can dive, but I can weave. President of the United States, people. Uh, Biden, I think I've read a little bit about it. Not, or actually, not, not really much of anything about it. I've seen, like, some headlines. Biden passed some kind of immigration thing that would basically haven't to recall the parameters of it, but basically would allow the the border to be shut down once we reached a certain amount of legal entries in like a day. I don't know if it was like a weekly thing or a monthly quota, basically. They could then like force the, the border close like, hey, we've had this many people come in between this period so for from this point until another point well because i mean no there's number like there's official like there's official numbers by nation that we will take annually like that's a state department like annual thing that they do like we will take i think sorry i think i think this is just asylum oh for those legally crossing with asylum i think they were only taking like so many i guess asylum applications per whatever period okay before they would say, okay, we're not taking any more like asylum Interesting. applications. Oh, I'll, have to, I'll have to get some more. I've heard he's going to get in flack from both sides, so it sounds like it didn't make a lot of people happy. Well, I mean, the Republicans, let, you let any in, that's too many. Right. And for the, le- the further left, if, you, if you're not letting everybody in, that's not enough. If you say no to anybody, that's wrong. So, yeah, I can see how that's a lose-lose for him. I mean, he's got a. I think, I think he has, for his electoral political ends. I think he needs to. He's trying to figure out some middle ground. Because I mean, realistically, like that, that's the thing to me about the election coming up. It's all the. It's it's, <clears throat> like, I don't know the the difference the, the difference in the candidates to me is the far left does not like Joe Biden, the far right is Trump, and so. Biden can either go further left to try to pick up his to pick up some more of that far left, or he can go further middle to try to steal some of that center right from Trump. And I think he's going that way. Like if I'm a Republican leaning voter, but I really don't like Trump, but Biden's doing some of the stuff that I do like because I'm on the right. No, I, I'm not. But I mean, trying to defend the far left, but I don't think that they advocate for just letting everyone in. I mean that that would be the that would be the only logical or, or, or some variation there. Anybody's everybody's seeking asylum. I would think that would be the argument that they would make. If they have a legitimate asylum claim, you need to, we need to take them. Should make an effort. I, I could see them maybe saying we need to hear we need to hear them out. I don't, I don't, I don't know. The, I don't know the right. Position. We need to hear them out and go through the process. I mean the problem the, the problem with the border control issue on the asylum thing because that's really the conversation. It's really all that matters. People that are sneaking across the river at night and whatever, 
that's a whole other animal. That does right. that's not really what the, that's not a policy conversation. Right. That is clearly Joe Biden and uh, you know and, Obama and, and Clinton and all those before him. And that's not what even you know that could could be considered you know people Ill- illegally or people in the country illegally. Like it's been pointed out, you know, multiple times, like it's it's people that overstay their visas. Basically, that's the majority. Are the, are the vast majority? Right. That's of what I'm people saying. Though, it, like, quote unquote, as a, illegally in the as country. a policy conversation, the policy is you have to legal, you have to enter through a port of entry. Oh, oh, right. You have to come through a port of entry with some sort of documentation that allows you in. Right. Right. That's so. That stuff you can do policy with people sneaking across the border in a tunnel at night. There's no the, that is the, the, the policy is already in place. That is illegal. You that is not right. permitted. Right. It happens, but that is not permitted. Um, and so it's the policy conversation that that is to be had. Like so, part of the issue. I think there. I think there was something they're trying to cut back from that. That that was. I think the number they were putting on was people that were crossing legally, claiming asylum. But again, I didn't. I didn't read specifics of right well that's like a tuesday maybe that's the policy question the policy question is okay so if you're coming to me seeking asylum how do we handle that do we right. let you in are you allowed to stay here while we adjudicate whether your asylum is legit or you know there was the there, there was a period of time where it was the stay in mexico policy where it was okay come present us your paperwork right and then go back to somewhere over there and we will call you and let you know when you can come before a judge and we'll review your case all right that was one version of the asylum policy because that's that's really all that's an, an argument right now is we have an asi- we have a policy that says we will take political as- uh, asylum seekers and there it's real complicated and convoluted and nobody knows exactly how it works or anything like that but when you are fleeing Colombia because the drug lords are killing everybody and you and America says they'll take people trying to trying to get away from a, a dangerous situation. Then they come, and but since the policy currently is, I think, well, with, before the adjustment, the policy is: if you have a legitimate asylum claim, you can come present your information, and then you will be given a court date. Right. And then it's a question of: well, what are you doing? Where where are you between the presentation of your papers and the court date? All right. There was a period of time where we were staying in Mexico. There is like, and, and again, as a policy, there are a certain amount, and it sounds like they're. They're, they're clearing that number and saying there's a certain amount that can come into the country and live and work and do whatever you need to do while you're waiting for your court date. And the real problem is, is the, that the money and energy and effort and desire isn't there to put enough judges and mediators and whatever the whole process is of adjudicating whether or not your asylum claim is legit. Yeah, a lot of numbers to that I've it, heard. It's all like, backlog. It's, it's all like, like, yeah, it's, it's once you're given like a date, like that date is like two years, 2029. Down the, right. Like it's years down the road and you can't legally work and you can't legally live and you can't legally get right. into any of the social programs. Or you can't legally do X, Y, or Z. And so you're not here illegally per se. I think but they're you're definitely also not more legal. willing. Like if you can show that you have, you basically you have a place to go like, Hey, I already know I've got family that, that right. live here. That's one of the things I've, I've heard as a, as, as a policy, um, as a, as a better like way to do the policy. You have some do, kind of tie. Right. would be to do a sponsor program. It's, uh, you know, you need to have somebody who sponsors you while you await your hearing hmm. and whether that's an individual and you go live with him or whatever, but your, your, whomever res- sponsors you is responsible for you. So if, if you were coming across the border and I say I will sponsor their um I will sponsor them while they while we adjudicate that, it's basically I take on the responsibility of making sure you have a place to stay and doing all that kind of stuff for you while you wait for your hearing. So basically I adopt you for a period of time is kind of the idea. And I would think that you would have some progressive nonprofits that would jump in and say, We will sponsor anybody and that they would put housing developments together and then they would come and house them and put uh, you know, and, and and basically, you know, they would sponsor as many people as they could to do the process. But at least then you have a citizen responsible, somebody who has legal functional ties to the United States as the direct go between between this conversation. Yeah. I think it's an interesting take on it. It does make it kind of weird because it's like, well, that's not, you know, it's not necessarily fair to somebody who doesn't happen to know somebody. Yeah. But... I would think very quickly there would be groups that form basically saying, if you don't know somebody, I'll sponsor you. 
Possibly, yeah. I think that there would be a lot of that that would go into place real quick. And some of that, you know, in dirty ways and some, and you know, but most of that in like actual, like, you know, like fucking a church mission, you know, like churches or some sort of religious organizations as their mission to the community kind of thing. I would think, yeah. but, uh, and again, this is one of those, I, I think Rogan's got the right answer on this one. A hundred percent Rogan's is. Why don't we make it? Why don't we do what we can and spend our money, money and energy trying to make it so they don't want to leave where they are? Instead of having to deal with how to integrate them into our society, we well, do that. We fail miserably at that. I think we do the opposite. Personally, I think we do a good job of making their homeland so bad that they want to get the fuck out. I think our involvement in Colombia's and Cuba's and Haiti's and so on. Are are part of our creation of some of our own immigration crisis. For some, on, on both ends, it's like at times, like we've you know fucked up things that we've tried to do in other countries, but at the same time, we've brought a lot of good to other countries that see us as kind of not necessarily a savior, but. As a better place. I mean, most most countries see us as a, a better place to I mean, live. It goes back to what we were talking about earlier. A friend of mine I was referencing took him eight years or whatever it was to get his citizenship and how excited and a big deal that was to him and it was something we were just given. Right. I do. I do. I acknowledge that. And that's, I mean, there, there's definitely that level of, you know, whether it's just sheer idolization or whatever. They, they think that, right. you know, there's what they see on all TV. this opportunity right. in America. But there is, I mean, that we spend a good bit of money in other countries, you know, trying to help out with violence and things like that or stabilization of governments. We've definitely made some. We've definitely destabilized our gross missteps of like, okay, well, maybe. Man, we, you were so generous maybe, the way you worded that. Good job. I like the way you worded that. That's what? a very generous way to word that. We've made some gross missteps. Okay. I would, I would argue that a lot of them were intentional missteps, but gross missteps is it's true either way. Well, it was intentional. I think it depends on this. I think there's different versions of different stories. I think it goes back to the root, my root thing. It's like, it's none of our fucking business. I think the one thing, I don't know. I'd be curious. It's a, what's none of our business. I don't know what the, I thought you were just advocating for that. We that you agreed with Joe Rogan that we should do more in other countries to prevent the the want Okay, so like to to expatriate. So like NAFTA, right? Like right, NAFTA is the whole free trade Mexico, Canada, U.S. thing, right. right? Yeah. Like that was designed as a as an attempt to make. I mean, it was supposed to be an attempt to make Mexico a more economically viable nation, therefore making their country a better country for people to live and work and do all those kind of things. Yet, I, I think as far as solidifying. The, the economic benefit that we have between the three countries. Okay. That I think Canada is still like okay. one, of, one well, of our, one of our biggest like buyers of American products. Okay. Well, I guess, I, I guess to clarify though, why I do agree with Rogan, maybe making, making other things better was not the best way to say it. Maybe not making things worse. Maybe that's my jaded attitude about us foreign involvement in general. Yeah. Maybe we should make things we should make maybe stop making things worse in those countries and maybe they would would stay there and not come here maybe that's better maybe that's m- my jaded way to, that i look at it i acknowledged jaded way right. i'm a i'm a cynical asshole about that I, I, th- I think there is a good bit done in the effort to try to stabilize you know central american countries that you know we have had an influx of people coming in from that have been experiencing high levels of, of violence. I mean, I think there's yeah. some that like, I mean, there's some that's the easy answer though. I mean, like, and this is a very, my, my, this is one of my favorite fun libertarian arguments to make. It's like, let's just not, let's just end the drug war or end the war on drugs. I'm sorry. That's the technical term for it. Let's end the war on drugs. Let's, let's put all that shit to bed. Like how much of it, is it how much, how much of the destabilization what, issues that play what problem does that solve? Well, it, in, in other countries. Okay, cool. We've, stop the the war on drugs here in america but okay. so when the drug trade like true when, i mean I, I, when the whole like when 90 percent of the point of all the drug trade that's happening is it is the import of it into the united states maybe not 90 percent that might be a little bit high but it, more than 50 percent 
of the cocaine produced in Colombia is smuggled into the United States. I believe that is accurate. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, so the cartels who run Colombia because the drug trade is so good, if we make it so that that, that industry goes away. How does the cartel continue to function without the without the that, that means to make I money? I don't think that slows the demand of what's coming in. No, it just changes it changes the way it works, and I think it changes the legalities of it. I would assume a number of them would come into the, like you could just go down to CVS and buy a couple of grams of coke and call it a day. I mean, I'd like I coke's maybe not the best example. I, I, coke's a fine example too, but marijuana is a better better example. But it's not. Cocaine and heroin; those are the two that matter. Those are probably the two. And fentanyl now, I guess. Ooh, that was one of the ones I sent you. That did you read? Did you read through the whole study? <laughs> what study? The, um, the forensic Narcani thing. Forensic thing? thing? Yeah. No, it said it was like thirty pages. Yeah, I, I tried to ask you if there was a particular part of it you wanted me to read. No, there's some highlights and stuff like that that I'd seen on it. It's just, I mean, um, apparently there's some like new thing that's out now. Yeah, there's a new. This is some new synthetic opioid that is not. That is Narcan resistant. I think that was a, that crocodilia or something. Uh, Somebody that was close to like crocodile. Yeah, that, no, it was not not uh, Naya something, Nanya something. Maybe I don't remember. I don't know. Like the I don't know. Like it was just one of those. Like the question I had in looking through some of the at least people that actually looked through its conversation on it was, I don't know how much. They were looking at population growth as part of the factor, because like opioid deaths are down. I did. I had seen that recently. Um, our Unless murder in Tennessee or in U.S. Our gun sure. violence rates are down, and you know, and, but and, and we we say down, it's down against last year's year before, whatever. It's 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 compared to it's raw numbers compared to prior years, and I'm curious if anybody's considering that as against prior years population as well because 10 gun deaths of 100 people is 10 percent where 10 guess 10 gun deaths of 200 people is only five percent so while the number is the same the percentage of the population goes down right and i don't know how much they've actually i don't know i don't know if they've if that's part of their way they calculate any of the conversation about it. Uh, I, I guess it depends on the metric because sometimes it's up like by a certain percentage, and they'll say it's up thirteen percent per one hundred thousand people, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yep. So, and that they're actually factoring in population. population. Right. I see what you're saying because you know, I've seen you know some people try to skew numbers and say you know New York City uh, like oh they had this many you know gun deaths or whatever. Right, but it's only like but if you look at it, and it's, it's like, like one well, comparatively like yeah. They're actually down compared to right. Knoxville was up. What, above, well, Knoxville was up above Chicago in twenty one. Was it per capita? Per capita, yeah. You know, and it's like okay, well, that is makes a difference in the conversation at least. Right. It's like, well, yeah, like the population of New York is bigger than the state of Tennessee, or whatever. Not, not exactly. I have no fucking clue. Oh, that, numbers it, it's wise. close. It's pretty close. Is it? Uh, what's it? Eight million. Well, then you have to argue what's 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 in metropolitan New York or whatever. Oh, yeah. well, it's wherever they get the stats that we're comparing. Sure, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, like easy, it's mi- easy. It's easy to skew statistics. It is indeed. Hence, our whole conversation of the Monica Irvine. It's it's easy to say a lot of stuff, but not really say anything at the same time. Yeah, especially it's easy to say I would have done X. Well. It's easy to say that. I could say I would have done X too, but right. I didn't because I didn't have the option to do. Yeah. It doesn't make it the same thing. I mean, maybe Becky had some people leaning on her. Or, I mean, maybe, you know, and I mean, honestly, like the, 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 the question to me is like, so you have district six here in, in Knox County, which I would say it's probably a Republican district. Um, but it includes this my neighborhood at large, which is District Four in County, which they're everybody's saying is a purple is purple, or if, if not leaning blue at this point. And so some of this could have been calculated, like some of her decisions on this could have been calculated politically, and saying 
I can't go too far right on this because my district isn't as right as it used to be. Possibly. You know, if 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 she thought of it in that mindset. Maybe and I, I mean to me pragmatic. You know, and to me that's that that that's the real question I have for, for, for Monica and anybody running for that matter. It's like, okay, I see this list of things that you put out on how you would have done this. And I can appreciate that. That's your opinion. And but how much do you think if you get elected, of your consist- right. constituents actually feel the same way? Right. If you get elected, does that mean you're, that everybody in your district agrees with you? Right. Does that mean that a majority of your district agrees with you? Because even if you win a majority of the district electorally, that is not going to be the majority of the district. Or not necessarily do they, but do you believe that they do, actually? Right. And... Uh, you know, and I guess that gets to the argument. Say, of, well, you know, the the numbers that the 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 county you know GOP gave me on all the numbers of the GOP voters, this is what they want. Well, no, I think I think the reality is is that is what this is what representative government representative government means. It is not democracy. It is I'm electing the person who is closest to my values to install their values. It's not I'm electing a person to vote to to vote on my values. It's I'm trying to find the person who has the closest set of values to me so that their values and my values line up. Because once I elect them, their values are what goes into play, not mine, not a collective version of values, theirs. <clears throat> At least that's that's how maybe that maybe I said that wrong. That's how representative government is seeming to function. Is if I can get elected, my values win. Well, no. You just got elected, and people liked you for one reason or another. Just because you than, ran on ten different values doesn't mean you got elected for all ten values, right? And 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 not that your job is going to be within those ten values anyway, right? You know, it's like okay, I could I could agree with her on all these things on her list, and be like, yes, that's a hundred percent the right way to, to deal with that. But there are, oh, I don't know, like just looking at the list, like you know. 8,001 was the highest number on the Senate bills of her list. 8,000 fucking bills went through. You gave me a list of seven on how you would have treated those. Five of them are kind of in one subset of government. There are 7,000 plus other bills that went through who that may not be anywhere close to this subset of government. Where are you on? Um, I don't know. Where is she on hemp <clears throat> and THC law? Right. I got some guesses, but I don't know that for a fact. Where are you on, you know, you know, like you you made a big thing about how uh, Becky let illegal immigrants uh, get uh, trade licenses. Well, I don't think trade licenses should exist. I, as a Republican, you should probably shouldn't either. Why don't you just get rid of them? Who cares if, if Becky gave them to illegals? The, the, the trade license doesn't need to exist. Where are you on getting rid of trade licenses? Is that a Republican stance? I mean, it would theoretically be. It should be. The trade license is, is bureaucracy stepping in 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 between uh, an individual and a service. It's the government rearing its ugly head and being too big. I would think, you know, that would be my understanding. I, again, I don't know what a fucking Republican is anyway, but I would think that a, a, the small government less... Uh, I'm talking about like licensure for yeah, trades, basically. plumber's license. Uh, and like a carpenter's license, a, a fucking real estate license. I don't care. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, you can complain about Becky giving those licenses to people that are illegals or whatever you want to call them. But why do we have the licenses in the first place? That's government overreach, isn't it? Isn't that one of the things that Republicans hate? So don't get mad at Becky for giving it to people that don't deserve it by your opinion. Get mad at Becky for letting them continue to exist. That would be the more Republican take, I would think. No. I'm just saying, like, like yeah. you know, but uh, on the point of, you know, it's like, well, you gave me seven, eight things that you, you know, you don't care if it's rape or incest, abortions are wrong. All right. Cool. That is, can we, can I'm, we, I'm, I'm a dude. Can we be done with her? I'm a dude. I don't care about abortions anyway, so I'm just kidding. Whatever. Yeah, I'm done. I got a, I guess it's time for news of the weird man. Okay. I just, I, wanna, wanna I, to, I didn't want to keep going back to like just one one constituent or one, one candidate. One no, candidate. I was, I was just trying to say like, it was just a, a, yeah. Anyway, that's the problem that that's the problem with representative government. I was just using her as an example. 
Get up, motherfucker. Home Alone house being sold. Swinging paint cans, not included. Oh, how much? Is, how much? Give me a dollar. Uh, That's got to be like a $10 million house. Listed right. for, you want to guess? Uh, all right, hold on. Like, real guess. Yeah. It's being listed currently. Yeah, I'm going to say mm, 11, $11 million. Yeah, 5.25. Ah, damn it. Like, I was literally between 6 and, and 11. Really? I was between six and eleven million dollars. Like, like, like I was going to say either a six or eleven million dollars. It's in a suburban Chicago, yeah, renovated yeah. and expanded in 2018. So it's even bigger. That uh, already was a huge house. I mean, expanded could be just adding like a room onto it. So yes, yeah. the answer would be yes. It's even yeah. bigger than it was. Yeah. Well, sales underway. Days after being listed, yeah, for five point two five million. See, it, it should have been eleven. Nine thousand square feet. Jesus Christ, that is eight, big house. That, that would be eight hundred thirty six square meters for the metrically inclined. <laughs> <laughs> Fully equipped gym and indoor sports court with a basketball hoop. What? <laughs> That's probably that addition. I don't remember that in Home Alone. That's a big fucking house. It was a big fucking house. You have a court with a hoop. I mean, if it's got a hoop, that means it's got like 20 foot ceilings, though. You know, like it's a big room. Let's see. House sold in 2012 for 1.58 million. Yeah, I can see that. Crawling out of the uh, the housing crisis in 2008, being down. I can't. What? YouTuber charged for having a helicopter blast a Lamborghini with fireworks. What was the charge? He didn't bother getting his permits. Let's see here. A YouTuber who specializes in quote-unquote car shenanigans. Federal charges. Directed a video in which two people in a helicopter blasted fireworks at a speeding Lamborghini from above. Charged with causing the placement of an explosive or incendiary device on an aircraft. The Department of Justice announced Thursday. <laughs> I mean, I'm not surprised that's a crime. I'm a little disappointed, but I'm not surprised. I mean, it's kind of differentiated. I mean, that, that essentially is an explosive. I mean, it's right there on the board of an incendiary and explosive device, and you're firing it from a helicopter. Yeah, you got a you 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 got a you got a rigged uh, uh, attack helicopter. You built a basically. Can't you be like, well, it was only fireworks? It's like you burned a car. You can't just be like, well, it was I mean, fireworks. It's, like it's his car. Yeah, they were burning at three thousand degrees. I mean, it's his car, right? I'm, I mean, uh, he had rights to the here. car. It wasn't like it was just a Post stranger. Video. Destroying oh. Lamborghini with fireworks. Video has since been taken down. See, it shows pressing a fire missiles button while two women on board a helicopter shoot fireworks at the sports car as it races across a desert landscape. Okay, so I'm going to be my my normal downer self here. You ready? I'm assuming that they had permission to use the property. They had paid for the helicopter rental, I'm assuming. Told the helicopter people what they were going to do. So a private helicopter owner allowed people to fire fireworks off of his private helicopter, which is what the crime is, because it wasn't about shooting it at the Lamborghini. It was about using weapons on a flying vehicle, basically. That's the crime, right? I'm not sure. (laughs) That's not right. It said putting incendiary or explosive devices on an aircraft. With causing the placement of an explosive or incendiary device on an aircraft. I don't know. It seems ridiculous for that to be a crime to me. If everybody involved was on board, like if like if the if the helicopter pilot and the or the like the company that they hired to fly the helicopter didn't know about it, okay, I could see that. But so like it's an FAA violation. Because it sounds to me like, yeah, like if I brought fireworks onto a Delta flight, I could see that as the criminal thing. 
because that is kind of like a public private agreement that I'm not going to be able to use things that could kill people and blow the plane out of the sky while we're flying. I get that. What else is there? Is there more parts? What am I missing? I was trying to do anything else. I guess he was driving it because the officials believe it was taken. Let's see here. So it shows the person pressing a fire button while two women on board a helicopter shoot fireworks at the sports car as it races across a desert landscape. So we don't even know if he was in the car. When it, did the, the car explode in the video? I want to watch this video now. It's too bad it's getting down. It's already been, it's already been taken down. It's a bummer. He posted a video. I thought it was saying he was driving, but maybe not. Because I would assume, realistically, what actually happened was... I mean, some of these YouTubers have such ridiculous money that they would actually blow up an actual Lamborghini. Um, but I would assume... like they. I mean, you can buy a used one for pretty cheap. They depreciate pretty quickly. Sure. But I would think they would be one of those like where he bought one... He bought, like a, 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 he bought one that was like already wrecked and kind of made it look right and then blew it up and then drove a real one that was good that looked the same. I don't know. Okay. So here, here's the question. Maybe this is a better way to, to discuss why I don't understand the crime here. When, you know, universal studios does a diehard 74 or whatever. And, John McClane fires a prop bazooka off a helicopter into a uh, an armored car to stop the hijackers or whatever. <clears throat> and they use real helicopters and maybe not a real bazooka per se, but they use some sort of real projectile to do the fire to get the scene to get it to the shot to look right and all that kind of stuff. What's right. the what's the difference? That's actually been approved to happen. The, the, so, I, I mean, you might be right. I'm not saying you're not, but so the 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 crime isn't that you brought an explosive device onto a helicopter. It's that you didn't get approvals to bring an explosive device onto a flying vehicle. Yeah, I'm assuming yeah, there's probably some kind of process in that. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's. I get it. I, I can get because I, I mean, there's safety. Safety precautions that are generally required when doing something like that. No, it's that you that wanted they, to put no, it on an, on an event that it's that the it's a, the the government wants to know that you're putting explosives. Right. Devices yeah, on that's a plane. all it is. Yeah, that's yeah, the government just wants to know when you're putting explosives on a plane. That, that's all it is. There's just overreaching. I don't. I can't. I. I. I well, it's I, not. It's not for the the safety of others that are actually involved in the actual event. I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. That's, think that's all it is. It's just no. Think, no, I, you're right. It, it's just the government just I, wanting to this, say, "Hey, you didn't tell us about that. You can't do it." This particular you can't do that. this particular piece of the crime part of it. Yes, I would think that was that that is the totality of it. I would think that if you were doing the major motion picture studio version of it, that that in that process there are other permits in place about Cause, human cause, safety because they could just do it if they just said hey i'm miramax i can i can do this right and they're like oh shit you guys are miramax fuck yeah you guys can do whatever the hell you want go ahead you have the okay you have nothing else that you have to do with this you don't have to have any kind of safety precautions in place you don't have to have you know fire trucks on hand in case anything happens nothing just okay you're you're a, a a known person, cool. American government's cool with that. You're big enough. You can do whatever you want. But hey, if you're Joe Schmo, don't even fucking think about it. So the the no no, it's just it, it's government. That's all it is. I, I'm I'm with you on it. Totally. So, so you, totally. what, 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 what's your, what's your, your? No, I'm with you. I, I agree with you. No, what, what, what's your, what's your? I, uh, okay, yeah. So, what the, the the inverse being that the 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 FAA cares one bit whether this YouTuber died at all. Like they would give a shit. Like they would lose an ounce of uh, a minute of sleep over this. 
Or if the Miramax people did it either. Like if 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 Die Hard seventy four did this and and a stuntman died, that FAA would have some responsibility because they didn't go through and check the protocols right. Yeah, if they approved it, yes. You, you, that the FAA would be responsible for a stuntman's death legally. That like that that the FAA would get sued for giving this permit out because every single contingency wasn't already put wasn't checked. No. <clears throat> so. Yeah, they, they, it's uh, yeah, it's bureaucracy, mass bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll stick with that. that. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. I think it is. Uh, Anything else? You got one more I, news? I'm with you. We good? I'm with you. One more. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Gotta get the palate cleanse of the tune. On a wing and a prayer, a pigeon is rescued by a French open chair umpire during a match. Ooh. Rescued by uh, from getting hit with a uh, tennis ball because that could put one of them pigeons down. Those guys hit those balls hard. Uh, let me see if it was hit or not. This one's for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> a pigeon landed on the court during a match, leading the chair umpire to use a towel to rescue the fallen fowl. Pigeon dropped the red clay and remained on the ground during a changeover. So it just fell out of the sky? Like it wasn't hit or nothing happened? It just fell? Uh, let's see here. This is one of the players. I hope the bird was okay. It was not looking good. I think maybe something was wrong with the wing. The referee did a good job. He was very gentle. I think that's important. I hope the bird is fine. Maybe they'll take it to the vet clinic or something. I don't know. We need to ask what happened after. I agree. What happened after? Indeed. Eagle-eyed chair umpire (laughs) did um, fly into action, (laughs) climbing down from the perch and grabbing a white towel. I'm going to start like looking to see like who writes some of these. Like if it's the same person that just have like these great puns. Uh, like there's one. Uh, was it uh, Randy Johnson? Remember the baseball player, Randy Johnson, tall, yeah. gangly dude. Oh yeah, yeah, killed a bird. Yeah, like killed a bird. It's still a viral video. <laughs> it's a fucking crazy. The big hurt. Yeah, yeah, I think he yeah. was the big hurt. Yeah, yeah. He's the big hurt. <laughs> that. Oh, good job, umpire. Good job. Last call, friend. You got anything else for us? Uh, that was too interesting. Nothing else too interesting. Sounds like the end of a show. Hey, guys, we did it. Uh, yeah, so if uh, Monica happens to not have listened to this, uh, she'll be here on Wednesday, and I'll release that show later on. Look, I'm a voter, if nothing else. Um, so, Plus, I got vacation coming up. I'm hanging out with my family, who are also District 6 voters. So if you got a shot at getting a district, like... like um, no, three of them. Five, four of them. My parents and my brothers and his wife live in District 6. Anyway, uh, a good handful of people in District 6 uh, could potentially vote for you, so you should come on my show anyway, because I have questions. And you know what? If I'm the uh, minority in the conversation, then people are going to hear your take on it, and um, they're going to think me the idiot, so that's fine with me, too. Anyway, almost agreement, everybody. Almost agreement at gmail.com, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Go to the website. Uh, check out what we got going on there. Uh, favorite podcast writer, all those things. Um, just, uh, text us to your friends, and uh, we look forward to talking to Monica and doing uh, another show next weekend. So we guess uh, we'll see you soon. Talk to you later. Bye.